Can you hear us now? Okay, good. Okay, if you could just uh, summarize uh, where you are, the changes since we last saw you, and um, uh, we'll take it from there. Hi. Chairman, we didn't hear at the beginning of the meeting. Are you starting with 79 South Greeley? Yes, yes, we are. We're calling the, it's uh, an adjourned public hearing, so it's been continued, so we're going straight into that right now. Thank so, you. Hi. Oh, um, I do want to apologize. We did have some issues with receiving the invites. So only Denise from our my team received the invites. Um, the invite. So you're going to see Denise all over the screen. Um, but this is Tamika with Project Expeditors uh, on behalf of Bank of America. And this is for 91 South Greeley Avenue, aka 79 South Greeley Avenue. Now we are proposing for some exterior alterations, which include painting the building white, recladding the existing canopies. We are changing the signage as well as some exterior lighting. So now for our last meeting, it was told to us to submit the final package of what was originally submitted, as well as the changes. Now we did have the renderings completed as well. And I do believe that I have my engineer here for um, any questions regarding the lighting levels. Okay, I think we're at the point where we recognize that we're going to see some spillage uh, into the roadway, uh, but it looks like it's um, it's unavoidable. You guys have to contend with the, I think it's a state regulation, not federal, right? Regarding uh, the lighting around an ATM. Uh, and so- Correct. We have to balance those, and I think, from what I've seen and heard, and uh, I think our town engineer is in with the town board right now. Um, but I spoke with him before, and he was satisfied with what you've done and how you measured these things. So um, I, I think that's where we're, we're balancing at this point. So if you could just, I don't know if you have a picture you could just show in case anyone in the public wants to see what the spillage might be, um, and then we'll take questions from you know public as well as the board members. I can actually pull up the plan. Um, just bear with me one second. I'm going to share my screen. Please let me know that you can see my screen. Yep, we can. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. So this is starting with that 30 foot radius. And let me know if you need me to zoom in anymore as well. Is that good? Um, yep. Can you see yep. that on your screen? Okay, good. Just making sure. Yep. <laughs> okay. Thanks. I do want to also just quickly pull up the rendering because I know that that was massive as well. I think that should be good. Was there any help from the, uh, the town's lighting there? Were you able to reduce any of the, uh, the lighting because of uh, use of or you know, tying into the, the existing lighting out there in the town on the sidewalk? I think there are only two lights out there, but I don't know if it helped. Yeah, I think I believe there's only one actually on. Mm -hmm. So it's this light right here is the only light that's on the side. We're making the modifications right here. If you can see my cursor. Yep. Okay. Um, for uh, regarding the lighting levels, I'm going to turn that to Stonefield. Jason, are you on?
Sorry, I'm thinking maybe some technical difficulties. I'm not sure if you can hear. Yep, he's having some bad connections. Okay, he's having bad connections. We can't hear. So one second, let me just try to message him here. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sometimes you can't control technology. I don't yeah. see him now. I'm wondering if he's trying to just connect back in. So apologize if I just give him a moment. Uh, does everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't hear anyone. We can't hear you if you're speaking. We should, we should move on. If we, yeah, I mean, yeah. Where? Okay, okay. Else, I think I can hear you. Um, yeah, you can hear us now. Okay. Can you hear us? So, through a little background on this project, this is part of the Bank of America. Yes, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we, yes. we do now. So, you know, Jason, sorry, we went through the the intro for the project. So I think right now they're just wondering if you were able to utilize that existing light pole in the design at all. If you can hear me. So, yeah. So we did give that sheet for the existing light pole along South Greeley Avenue there. We did lighting it. Uh, you know, it really is just a feature. It didn't any additional put. We are getting every today. other word. Ultimately, it would come down. We are getting every other word that you're saying. We should move on. Yeah, can someone else make his presentation or answer the questions? Yeah. It's... Jason, if you just want to check your email, I did send you that email back if you want to respond to it. But it, I believe what he is saying is that um, it didn't really assist with any of the lighting levels. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. So we, we have your plans. Uh, they're mm -hmm. all consolidated uh, from the beginning. Thank you very much. So we have them now in one place. Thank you. Um, is there anything else that you want to raise that was a change at all? No. Okay. There was nothing else that was changed. Yes. Yeah. All righty. Um, Sabrina, are you there? Okay. Guess not. Any questions from board members? No, nope. none here. Any questions from the public? Do we have anyone with a hand raised on this at all? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Oh, okay. <clears throat> hi, Sabrina. Hi. Did you have any comments or questions or issues? I did. I did not know. Is is Bob back from the meeting also? He is. He's online. Okay. Bob, do you have any issues or questions uh, on this application? I have no comments. Okay. And Dennis, I think you resolved the issue about the tree because they're not going to touch the trees. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, is there a hand raised at all from the members of the public? I don't see anything. No. Okay. 
All right, not seeing any. Um, uh, and we don't have any questions or problems or issues. So is there a motion then to close the public hearing? So move. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thanks, Dick. Um, we have a resolution before us that's been prepared for this uh, application. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments on it? I just had one, and that's on uh, line 19 on page 3. So, again, I think it's state regulation, not federal regulation that we're dealing with. The balancing on the ATMs. Mm. No comment. Okay. Um, I did have one question regarding the resolution. Sure. It just it doesn't mention painting and the recladding. Does that something that needs to be in this resolution of approval? It's only mentioning the lighting, I believe. Well, do we have? Uh, oh wait, it second. references the elevations, so it references it should reference at least all plans in your plan set, Got which it. include yep. which I believe includes the painting and the cladding and, and all of those details. I see it here, Jennifer. Thank you. Appreciate Perfect. that. Perfect. Okay. Page two. Okay. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as amended? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, 4 0. Uh, motion's carried, and you're all set. Great. Thank you guys so much. I know this was a few meetings, so I do appreciate your time. And Felicia, thank you. I know I asked a lot of questions, so I appreciate it. <laughs> all right, everyone, enjoy the rest of your night. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Thanks. Good Bye. Good <laughs> okay. Good night. Okay, we move our, to our next item, um, and this is the public hearing for Group Site. 63 Seven Bridges and 4 Winthrop Road. This is an application for a tree removal permit. Um, this is the first we've seen this, right? So we need a motion to open the public hearing. Yes. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? Second. I'll move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Thank you, Dick. Um, so if the applicant can just fill us in, and I know we have some additional pictures and additional information that was supplied to us. Thank you very much. Um, we'll take this one on. Great. Good evening, everyone. Brad Schwartz from Zarin and Steinmetz. Brian Gutzite is in the planning board meeting room tonight. Frank Giuliano is on screen with me. Um, so this is an application for a tree removal permit. The Gutzites own two lots adjoining back-to-back -back with a common rear property line. And as explained last month, the whole purpose behind this application is to remove a total of 19 trees, 10 of which are within a period grading limit line in order to open up a line of sight between the two properties, again, both of which are owned by the good side. So the main residence on one lot and a pool and a pool house on the second lot. We did submit, as you mentioned, Mr. Chairman, some additional photos. I'll share the tree removal plan now on the screen. I know that Frank has spent quite a bit of time with Dennis going over it, going over the replanting requirements, and we think we have a plan that satisfies all the relevant requirements. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I could just interrupt real quick. Um, Brad, I just want to clarify the, the lot with the pool and the pool house. By pool house, I'm assuming you're, you're referring to the structure that's also a re residence. It's a, it's a primary um, residence, correct. Correct, yep. Okay, it's, so it's yeah. not just accessory features on correct. that a, lot. Thank you for clarifying, Jennifer. It's a primary residence. It meets all those requirements together with the pool. Perfect. Just wanted yeah. to clarify yeah. that for the record. Thank you. Thank you. So we so we colored in the drawing for purposes of ease of review during tonight's public hearing. The trees that are um, noted in the teal color are the trees within the clearing grading limit line that are proposed to be removed, and the the purple colored trees are outside of the grading and limit line. Um, and then two of the purple trees, tree number one and two, are within the regulated buffer. So that kind of just outlines all the different trees that are being removed. And a note was added to the plan for some feedback at the last meeting and based on conversations with staff that the shrubs in this area are, are not um, to be removed. And there was also a note that was added to the plan. It's in small font, a little difficult to read, but this, is, this addresses um, replanting in the future in the event 
that uh, one or both of the lots are sold to someone other than the group size. Right. Okay. Uh, Sabrina, do you have any questions or issues? Anything you want to raise? Okay. Bob, are you set? On, okay, Bob, are you set on this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Chairman. Okay. Dennis, I know you were out there quite a bit, so uh, uh, do you have any comments that you can uh, help us with? Um, and, uh, sort of pre-inspection uh, or preemptive concerns, uh, just so that I, you know, had opportunity or have opportunity, you know, prior to, to the removals, I included that language in the resolution of just requiring like a pre-cut inspection just to make sure that it's the trees that are indicated on the plan, uh, as well as um, if we're truly uh, looking to uh, have those shrubs remain there, you know, some of them are of good size, so I just want to, you know, we should have some, maybe some field protection out there for them just so that they don't get damaged during the removal process. Okay. And then I'm fine with the, uh, you know, with the replanting. Um, I tried to allude to in the uh, resolution, you know, they're actually quantity-wise planting more trees than are required. Right. Uh, so for the consideration of 121.6 and, you know, all the um, tree calculations and those algorithms, uh, you know, I only based it off of their required replacement number of uh, 26 and so they meet you know those those requirements uh, as well so i had no no further comments or issues okay so you're satisfied with the plan and, and i think you've spent a good deal of time on it and uh whatever permit you grant will have uh th th those kinds of uh, protections in there in terms of what's going to be protected during the course of clearing yes okay great thank you okay um any comments from board members questions from board members no Okay, uh, anyone's hand up for the public or anyone here from the public? Yes, come on up, please. Hi, Hi how are you? How are you? Good. Hi, greetings everyone. I'm Victoria Alzapini. Uh, I live at 65 Seven Bridges Road, so I'm right next door to uh, the, good, the new Good Site residence at 63 Seven Bridges. And uh, first, before I even start, I really want to share with you how difficult it is to appear before you right now. Um, I have never come to a public hearing before uh, about uh, neighbors, trees or residents or any issue. And uh, it's difficult, you know. Um, I would like to have good relationships with my neighbors. We all you know I'm a lawyer by training. I know private property, we all are entitled to do what we want to do on our property. And we all have different ways of using our property and preferences, and I respect that. Um, in this instance, I just really wanted to bring some things to your attention. Um, I've been following the meeting, so I've heard some of your you know, conversations. Uh, so some of what I have to say are questions, and some are just things that I want you to be aware of in your decision making. And I would hope, you know, um, this is really, again, the person I've come to a Pine Board meeting in a long time, and when I was looking at the agenda, I see that there's, you know, all the documentation, the submissions, uh, and then there's the resolution. So, I, you know, I... That was kind of surprising to me that the resolution would already be kind of on the table. Um, and I just hope that you'll listen to what I have to say with an open mind. And if there's a need to um, for me to submit anything else to you or consider things that were due to visit the site, whatever, um, I hope that you'll you know, consider that seriously. Um, so I want to thank you for everything you've been doing with us. I really want to thank Dennis also, all the staff, um, Mr. Goodsite. You know, I have to tell you my history with um, the Goodsite family. Um, is actually positive uh, from a few years ago when they first purchased this property. Um, I actually reached out to them because the previous resident used a lot of pesticides. And I'm a habitat gardener, I'm a pollinator gardener, I'm um, well, you know, an attorney, um, public policy person by training, but have taken a lot of courses about you know, wildlife nature, pollination, all of that. Um, so they, you know, I asked if they could consider not using pesticides on their property. And they were totally amenable, open, totally willing to do that, connected me to their realtor who managed the property. So that was my sense of them, you know, they're lovely people. This is not personal in any way. And I'm hoping that we can find some way that can meet everyone's needs. Um, but, you know, I also think about the balancing of private property 
uh, and the right to do what one wants to do, and then also the policy issues, right? So the environmental issues, we have, you know, I brought some pages from the comprehensive plan that talk about habitat and, you know, uh, in harmony with nature, and we just are completing the natural resources inventory, the NRI, and our tree code is very respectful about trees and habitat and clean air. We're in a climate crisis right now, so we know that trees are very important. Um, so, you know, with that context, um, I'm going to share with you some thoughts uh, in four categories. One is why these trees. Another is these trees too. Uh, the third is what about the nesting squirrels? And the fourth is what about the bobcats? Um, so when I think about why these trees, right? So it, the plan is there. Um, as I guess I just want you to possibly tune in on an empathy level to how the experience of this um, Whole, you know, rebuilding of this home has been for a, a neighbor. Uh, when the when I first learned that they they were going to take down the house and build a new one, um, I remember there was a, I believe an initial tree permit, or my understanding was that there were only going to be I think three or four trees coming down. And because I'm very sensitive to trees to begin with, right? I mean, in all spirit of disclosure, I'm on the conservation board. You know, I do a lot of work around environmental conservation. Um, so I thought, oh, three or four trees, you know. That's totally reasonable. Um, and I, you know, I thought, okay, this is what's going to happen on this new property. So then, and also, you know, bearing in mind that this was, this is a one acre zone, right, um, on Seven Bridges Road. And also, this is actually a wildlife corridor. I don't know how much you've discussed this, but on the other side of Seven Bridges to 63 is a wetlands right there, an active wetlands that actually feeds back into the prime sanctuary. So there's a lot of woodland there. This is an area that the animals come from that, from the prime, from that wetlands, and then behind Winthrop is actually a New York State DEC wetlands. Uh, you know, many acres of protected wetlands. So the animals, and actually I brought you kind of a, something to share from a report that I'm gonna uh, send to you, but this shows out of my office window, um, a bobcat passing through. Um, so literally, this bobcat went from Seven Bridges um, up through between the houses and um, and up to the 63, you know, residents and beyond. Um, and I know that I don't know if this is the same you already have this, but I'll give it to you. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, so this is a it's a wildlife corridor. This property, and so just wanted you to kind of be clued into that. Um, so my understanding with this being a one acre zone is that the property, the good side property on Winthrop is one acre and the good side property on Seven Bridges is one acre. And so I assumed that, I, you know, as a resident, I moved to my house. It was advertised as a park-like property, right? This was even before Sandy, before Irene, before we lost a lot of trees. Very woodland, a lot of woods. Um, on my property, the adjacent properties and the whole the character of the neighborhood. Um, and so I thought, okay, you know, it'll be intact except for taking these few trees down. Um, because the, I guess the decision was made not to, for the family, the good sites not to come before whatever entities they needed to, to adjoin the properties and make it one. Um, so I kind of made the assumption that there would be two functioning properties. So then as time passed, this new uh, tree permit was applied for. And I was actually very surprised because I thought, well, why were these trees not included in the initial permit? Because for me as a resident, as a neighbor, my expectation, right, life is all about expectations in many ways, I thought that they were only taking down three or four trees. I might have looked at this entirely differently earlier um, and shared feedback or whatever, you know, brought, you know thought more about it in that respect. Um, so then I understood, you know, okay, they want to take these trees down and the feeling, and correct me if I'm wrong, anyone, please correct me that the feeling was that they weren't going to join the properties, but they wanted to have a view from their Winthrop house to the pool and to the other property. So they wanted to kind of clear the trees, the, basically the buffer, right? And we all know that buffers are part of living here in Newcastle, right? Um, as a resident, it's interesting because you kind of rely on the town to adhere to the laws that are on books. And there are some, some exceptions, of course, made. Um, but I thought, okay, well, this is interesting. There's a buffer there. Um, is that going to come down? And as a resident who lives next door, you know, I love where I live. Um, I take pictures of the of the view in the morning, as the sun rises, as the sun sets. I have a beautiful, very fortunate to have a beautiful view shed. 
Um, it's the trees on my own property, the trees beyond it. So many of the trees on the Goodside residence are part of my viewship, my enjoyment of my property, my experience of my property, not to mention the habitat value and the birds and all the animals that live there. So I thought, okay, this is interesting. And again, wanting to be supportive of what they wanted to do and how they wanted to enjoy their property. Um, and thought, okay, well, maybe they're just going to take down a few trees so they can see between. Um, and not to go too deep, I mean, you know the, you know the history. Um, the decision, I guess, was made to leave some of the trees that are closer to my side, right? So I'm on, on to the north of, the, of this property. So that would be to the right of that sketch up there? The left, the left. that little half square. A 50 chance. Can I, is it okay if I walk? <laughs> Do you sure. mind if I walk over there? Sure, the you can actually on? bring the microphone with you, I think. <laughs> okay. We haven't done this in so long. I mean, it's, right. And I, this is the first meeting I've been to, by the way, without a mask. This is like radical for me to <laughs> be here, but it's important, so. Okay, so if anyone can hear me. Um, and then you know, this map much better than I do, this site plan, I'm trying to worry, um, you know, this is not my professional area. Um, right, so this is my house, and so this is that whole line here, right? So I, my understanding is the decision was made, and again, I appreciate everyone's efforts to try to compromise and find, you know, some balance here. So while this whole area, and this whole area are part of my view shed, right? Um, I initially thought maybe there would just be a few trees taken to get a line, a side of the line side, but now I understand it's this whole area, um, but that they were going to leave some of these trees. One of my questions actually is that um, this points to a maple grove that will remain. I think those are kind of right in the corner, just FYI, just I'm not sure if that's how I'm mistaking that. And then there are a bunch of other trees here and some shrubs underneath, um, and then all of these trees, and then coming down here. So some of my questions of why these trees are, is it necessary? In other words, when the decision was made to clear these, um, which I guess is what I initially then thought, there would be the view from the house to the other house, right? Which, me having empathy, that, you know, I understand they want to do that. But then I wonder, why do these trees have to come down? Um, this is a major part of my view. There's some really beautiful tall trees here. Um, a few of these are kind of native, you know, hickory and, um, and a couple of other trees. They're really, really tall. And so I wondered, are these really, just in the spirit of asking, are these really part of the view? In other words, this is so far into the corner. Um, do these help achieve their goal of wanting to see through, which I understand that goal. So I don't want to question that and ask about that. Is it really necessary to take those down? Is it really, would it really compromise their enjoyment of their property? Um, to leave at least a couple of those tall trees, because I, I think what they want to replant here are some much smaller trees, or trees that won't get that tall, right? So I see these trees, these trees are up on the skyline from my perspective. Um, so that was one question. And then again, the other question was to make sure, are those maple trees the ones in the corner? Um, and then here, the discussion about, um, there's you know, a bunch of big trees there in the uh, clearing grading line. Are the shrubs, are you talking about just the shrubs, like technically what we think of as shrubs, or are we talking about any tree that's under, you know, four inch caliber that might be also considered a shrub as opposed to a tree for the tree ordinance purposes? So that's a question, um, because I think they're both in there. So at any rate, those are some of my questions about the plan. There was, there were one or two here that I also was wondering about. I think it's 26, 27. There were two Norway spruces and maybe this is a landscaper. Um, I know in my view shed, there are two, one or two huge Norway spruces that are like one of the most beautiful parts of the skyline there. I think these are smaller ones. So I believe that they were, are keeping some of the bigger spruces. Um, but wanted to ask about that. So that's under the category of, you know, why these trees? Well, we have, let me um, interrupt a little bit here because um, and maybe you can shed some light on this. In looking at the schedule, for example, I'm looking at the corner. I, I take your point, um, but and I don't. This is what we have in front of us. For example, those two spruces that you mentioned, uh, the applicants uh, considering or telling us that the condition of those two spruces is dead. And you look at, for example, tree number three and eight uh, up there in that corner, which are, well, eight's not scheduled to be taken down, but number three is, and that's uh, condition is it's a uh, black birch. It's said to be in poor condition. Number seven is a Norway maple said to be in poor condition. So uh, I guess, you know, this always becomes a little bit subjective, but uh, 
I think you, you make a good point in saying that that doesn't necessarily enhance the, um, the view shed. But if they're in poor condition, and if they're going to replace some of these with uh, other shrubs and trees, that'll be presumably in better condition. Um, uh, it seems like something that seems, it strikes us, it strikes me anyway, it's a little bit reasonable. Now, if you, if you had, uh, for example, I don't know, uh, I don't know which one that might be the big spruce. I'm trying to track it. Do you know which one it might be? I'm wondering are along this side. Um, I don't know if you can move this up, but they're, they're basically, um, yeah, I guess those along the side there, right? 25, 26. Yeah, 23, for, to... yeah, 23 is a bitter nut uh, hickory and again said to be in poor condition. Right. Which is, uh, I, I take your point, is right, there. I see them, right now there are no leaves. Um, and I was thinking I should submit a picture to you right now, there are no leaves, but I'm pretty sure there are a bunch of trees there that still get leaves. So well, yeah, there may get leaves, but dead is no leaves, but right, poor exactly. is you know, not, not doing well. Right. And, uh, you know, right. usually compromised. Sometimes uh, we hear, I, I don't think that these are the case. Sometimes we hear, uh, I'm sure Dennis hears this all the time, that sometimes when they're poor condition, they're compromising safety. I don't think that's a situation here because I think these are far enough away from the house that that's not an issue. Yeah. But we can, I mean, look at number five. What is number five? Um, is it dead remains or something? I don't know what that is. Right, and I wasn't concerned about um, so I, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, and I think you make a very good point that, gee, some of these really are not necessarily in that view shed that we're looking into the other lot, but in looking at what has been presented to us in the condition, these conditions are coming from a licensed landscaper, landscape scientist, I guess. I mean. uh, they are environment. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, these are the conditions. So virtually all of the ones that are being taken out, there's only one that's really in good condition too, right? So number, um, it's a hemlock number 11. Can anyone find it? Can you find it up there? Number 11 is in the Oh, there, the it's right smack in the middle of the view shed. Okay, so that's unfortunately one of the ones that sort of has to come down if you're, if you're going to do this. And the other <coughs> is uh, number six. And I don't know where that is. All right, number six. That's the more we need. I think that was in the corner. I think it's in the corner, right? Can I um, sure, ask some questions? Um, so first of all, your, your first uh, comment was that um, you're, you know, um, that you hope that we would listen and you see that um, there's a, a resolution on the, on the agenda. I want to make clear that we listen. The, re the reason the resolution's on the agenda is if there was no objection that we could just process applications quickly, but it, this doesn't mean just because there's a resolution on the agenda that we have already voted on it. We're happy to listen and happy to, to take in. Uh, I mean, I, I can't speak for the rest of the board, but I, I like when there are uh, public uh, members commenting. It means that there's relevance to what we're doing, right? So I'm, I'm happy to hear from you. So thank you, and we're listening. We're open to your comments. So that's just to, to be clear. Um, next, uh, you mentioned the, the setting of the bobcat. I live on the other side of town, but uh, um, I've seen a bobcat on my property. My wife just saw one last week. Um, oh, cool. So. Uh, um, it's it is exciting uh, to see the, the wildlife. Um, I have uh, some questions um, about your property um, uh, relative to um, the property in question. It says it's uh, that Brad, hey, Brad, can you uh, zoom out a little bit? Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Okay, thank you. Um, so your house is to the north on the left on the screen, right? Right. And um, can I ask, I mean, without getting to, you know, you don't have to answer, but just, you know, what you said, you're, you're, you're viewing this way. Is that from the first floor, the second floor, the outdoors of your house, like what rooms of your house, like what, what is yes, viewing that one way? One story house okay. with a yard, a big yard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my garage is over here. Um, so, you know, I'm not really walking through here very much, but I do spend time in the backyard and coming out of my garage. So I, when I'm in the, this is my patio, when I'm in here, I do a lot of gardening. This is what I see this way. When I'm even, you know, hawking the dog, I see this way. I know it's hard to see, but you really can see. It's very rich right now. I mean, it's really beautiful um, how many trees are here, how many trees are. You see this. I know this has to come down if this moves forward, but this actually looks really beautiful from the street. But again, I, you know, I'm not here to stop this project. That's not my goal. Um, so, yeah, so I see this, you know, in here. 
Um, I think maybe actually it doesn't make sense to skip to two things if that's okay. Sure. Um, so when I asked, you know, what about the Bobcat, since we're talking about the Bobcat, so the Bobcat came basically through here and walked that way. So right now, and this, is, and this is an interesting jurisdictional question. I don't really know who has jurisdiction over this. But one of the questions I have about this whole project is that there's a pool, obviously, there's going to be a fence. And my understanding is there's going to be a fence possibly all the way here to the corner of the property. Right, and this is a bigger public policy question, not just in my own interest. Right now, the property behind me, from the corner, has a fence. The whole property, back of, the, of my property, adjoining theirs. The next property also has a fence, and the next property has a fence. So right now, we have three fences in a row with no break. So once this fence goes up, if this fence abuts this and there's no space, where, well, what about the buckets? In other words, all these animals that are coming from this wetland, and I'm so, I apologize to Brian Goodside because I really, I really, this is not personal in any way, but these animals leave this wetland, and I see them, coyotes, foxes, they walk through, um, and they come through, and so they're now gonna have another fence blocking in a major corridor that they use and live with. Can I, can I, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah. unless I'm mistaken, somebody can correct me here, but I, I think that somebody putting up a fence on their property is actually a matter of right. I and I don't think there's only, I don't think the planning right? board, I don't think the planning board has the authority to say you cannot have a fence right. as long as a fence meets the And that question is not before us today anyway. No, there's no, no fence. I, 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 no, I, 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 I exactly. our prior conversations. I actually so, told her that I wouldn't put fence up. I, I'm trying to, I'm, excuse me. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to, to get to the, the cogent, parts of your concerns that actually we have some jurisdiction over that we might be able to consider. And I appreciate that. Thank I appreciate you. That. The re, you know, I was not, I'm not suggesting a cushion for the fence. I was just thinking if there's any way that as part of the, what we're coming to agreement on that if, even if a small space could be left for some thoroughfare. Um, but that's just, a, and yes, you know, we did talk about that and I don't know if that's still on the table, but you know, that's something that I, we have discussed a little bit. Um, so that's the question about the podcast. Then the other question about what about the squirrels? This kind of is maybe, I don't know, maybe this isn't in your jurisdiction actually, but I'll just go through it quickly to Tom's point. Um, this is a row of hemlocks. And, and I do want to be grateful, thankful, that really there are no trees coming down in between our properties. They haven't proposed any trees coming down. Um, there's a row of beautiful, healthy um, stand of hemlocks, like literally right on the barrier bar between our properties. Um, and, and Brian Goodside and I have talked about, if at all possible, I would love the fence to be on their side of the property because there are nesting squirrels up there that live on, you know, wander around the property, and I don't want them to not have access to their, the trees. Um, again, that's a fence question. It's tricky because no one really has jurisdiction over the fence. So, but again, maybe we can pick that out. Um, so, Finally, the question, one question that I have around um, these, what is my next, um, these trees too, that was my final, right? So we know what's being proposed here, and I guess there's maybe some like internal angst for me having seen the first tree permit that I thought was going to be the whole one for three or four trees, and then the next tree permit that really is much more expensive. So there's a little something in me that is a little bit thinking, okay, so this is all going to go through. Well, what if next year? There's another tree permit, and that one says these are going to come down, and maybe some of the, you know, who knows. And so this is interesting. I've never encountered this before. I don't know, um, you know, right, there's that public policy tension or, you know, how I enjoy my property um, and the value of property value, right, um, and it being wood, woodlands and all of that, and how they're able to enjoy their property. So does the planning board ever work with, um, with an applicant to make an agreement to understand that and, like, and even as these words come out of my mouth, I don't know if this is even humanly possible, but so that next year there's not another one that suddenly then. No, we can't. I mean, as a matter of fact, the tree law is pretty clear in terms of, first of all, a property owner has certain rights with regard to clearing a certain number of trees without any permit, um, including larger trees. So, um, and there's nothing that precludes it says this is your last permit uh, for a given uh, approval. So there's nothing in the law that provides for, for that kind of prohibition. So it could be, in theory, they come back, a person could come back every single year and, and come up with different trees that they would like to clear. And if it makes sense, it makes sense. In this particular issue, I mean, um, as I understand it, 
the applicant is, is actually supplementing, I hope it's been so long, uh, supplementing by putting trees in here, giving you additional buffer. Uh, I know you're talking in terms of view shed. We normally talk in terms of buffering to customer, uh, customers. Uh, applicants, applicants, and, and, and <laughs> owners, property owners, customers. I, I, I get Client, their clients in a way. Yes. So and you're then, getting at one and over here we have is the replacements. Can yeah. we talk about the replacements? Yeah, we have more over here as well. And the, and the issue that we have that really is before us is it, obviously there's some trees coming down. But the thing that we wrestled with the last time we talked was about this area here, and the zoning is that there's supposed to be a 15 foot buffer between in this in this zone between properties. So what it came down to is uh, between these two properties, which are owned by the same person, we're basically looking at 30 feet uh, that would be cleared uh, outside of what we normally see in the zone. And uh, you know we wrestled with that and we talked about it. We did not on balance think that that was an issue and that um, it would not impact the neighbors because after all the applicant was actually supplementing you know trees in here and trees in here where we would expect that there might be impacts to to people other people's property so um although that might be in your view shed uh the issue for us was whether it's usually the concern is is these two properties in terms of view shed. that's where the 15 foot buffer really comes into play on both of those properties so it's the 30 foot there but um you know given the uh, different circumstances that we had in this particular case uh we were leaning toward um, um uh, granting approval but you've raised some issues here and, and, and maybe we should look more carefully at some of these trees but it seems to me that in looking at them uh, everything I'm looking at here in terms of it's being proposed to be cleared is either in poor or dead condition with two exceptions and I think we all agree that the, the two exceptions are ones that are right smack in the middle of the area that would have to be cleared if this is going to work and, and they're not I think they're spruces and hemlocks so that uh, it's not something that you could say it's a it's a canopy tree, deciduous canopy tree that you could just leaf up and, and branch up, and maybe that would work just as effectively. So uh, maybe if we had that, would be a different situation. Yeah, it's interesting that you point that out because I was thinking about this myself recently. That uh, in the conversations that you've had, you talk about okay, if it's the property is sold someday to replant, and the experience of someone in a one acre zone is you're used to, right, we're, we're conditioned to see these boxes, right, with, you know, these boxes of, of segmented property with with trees around the property or foliage. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely will change my experience of this, you know, and I know these are a lot of damage, but it, it, they do look beautiful, I have to tell you, from a distance, um, but I understand that they can be evaluated and so, that's the key area. Um, can we talk about the replacement can I, trees? Can I, okay. Sorry, Tom, go ahead. Yeah, I'd just like to jump in here for a second Please. and see if I can sort this out in my mind. <laughs> First of all, I'm not aware of a squirrel who cannot climb a fence. And if you have squirrels who can't climb fences, send them to my yard so they keep, they keep them trading. out of the vegetable garden. <laughs> so the habitat question and that, um, that cat is able to go anywhere he wants to go. And the I, 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 The bobcat. The bobcat. You think so? Oh, yeah. You can climb any fence. Babies. Absolutely. He can go anywhere he wants to go. And my guess is if there are fences all over the place already, that's proof that he can go every, anywhere he wants to go because he's there. So that's number two. I don't think that this is a habitat question for me. There's just not enough significant tree canopy here for this actually to, to be accumulated to be a habitat question for species of particular concern here. So that's number one. Number two, I understand the desire to not lose the trees in your view shed, but to ask a property owner to, to not be able to take advantage of what's on his property in deference to your appreciation and enjoyment of what's on his property is not something that I think that we have the right to do. Seems to me that's an overreach. Um, I am concerned though that I understand us wanting to advance this and preparing the um, the uh, uh, resolution in order to move this along, but I was never myself completely on board with this yet. And my concerns are, uh, first of all, 
there are, and we see these statements all the time from arborists and experts and people who say that, well, the tree's in poor condition. Well, as Bob said, that's a subjective term. And I'm looking at photographs, I think, of the trees that are actually listed to be in poor condition. And I mean, they don't look diseased to me. You know, they look like maybe they're planted a little too close together. Look to me like maybe they could be cleaned up a little bit. They could be cared for. But I don't see these trees to be in poor condition. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong photographs, but I think these are the ones that are the Norway, the Norway spruces, which are in line in the back, which are separating two pieces of property. The, the, the photographs don't make that case for me. So I'm and, and the hemlock. Well, just because a hemlock is in the way doesn't mean that the hemlock therefore needs to go. If it's a if it's a healthy hemlock, there's no legitimate reason to take it down, as far as I can see. To me, the 30 foot buffer, I think, still should be something which we pay attention to, something that we still ought to honor, because these are still, unless I'm mistaken, these are still two different lots, and. Unless these lots, two lots, are joined into one lot, that does not go away. It's still there. Now, we can decide to honor it. We can decide to say that, well, it ought to ma be maintained as a buffer, or we can grant some sort of relief and say it can be taken out for the benefit of the property owner. I don't, for me, I, don't, I haven't come to my conclusion yet on which way it ought to go, but I think that ought to be talked about because there's no guarantee that one day these lots aren't going to be uh, one lots. The lots aren't going to be in the same ownership, and you're going to revert back to essentially the one acre lot configuration that these buffers are supposed to protect. So, for me, I would like to better understand, and you know, maybe Dennis can help us here. I mean, I maybe the site business is called for. I don't know, but I'm looking at these photographs, and these trees don't look like they are in poor condition. They look to me as though maybe I'm wrong, maybe the disease. They look to me as though there's 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 no justification to take them down based on the tree condition. The only justification that I can see that that um, is is being made here that has any legs to it is we want to take these trees down to be in order to be able to look from one piece of property to the other to essentially visually join the two pieces of property and to me that's not justification to take down six or seven or eight trees that might otherwise be healthy and not justification to eliminate a buffer between two adjoining lots and and uh, one other issue that we've really wrestled on with this this, this application is and uh, We've been working on the words, and I think the words are in here, but we've all recognized that if the properties fall into different ownership, the enforcement mechanism is almost non-existent to, to go back and say to the new owner, now you have to restore the 15-foot buffer. It's, it's, it's not going to happen. Exactly, exactly. We, it's, it's, you know, we've got words in here, and it'll be on the resolution, but uh, that's, all, that's been something that we kind of wrestled with right from the get-go in, in case that happens or when that does eventually happen. So, um, and, and maybe there's something, um, the planting plan uh, that we have, it looks to me that um, uh, in this area that, uh, that they're looking at to, to clear, Dennis, uh, there's no, it's just going to be shrubs in that area? So, yeah, there is, um, there's, there's like a line of trees, a line of shrubs relatively close to each other, and, and, and the shrubs, you know, they're not uh, young, you know, so there are, there are some mature shrubs. So that was the uh, sort of revision was that the trees were going to be removed and, you know, where the shrubs were uh, existing um, were going to remain. But what, what was the area? Was it uh, 30 feet, 35 feet, 45 feet? This, this spread that we're, that is being proposed for this uh, basically a turf uh, visual uh, connector by the time we the the, uh, the trees were cleared I think we looked at that last time we had a number I think you had uh, given us some sort of number but is I this think 106 I mean but that's what that was representing this this line of length I think is indicated as 106 feet but sh and that's uh, and, right, and shrubs are going to be removed from this area. So the width of that 
alleyway was going to be 106 feet. So we talked about this a fair amount last time. Mm -hmm. And um, I think uh, from my perspective, we talked about it sufficiently and asked these questions about, you know, the single property owner with two lots and the hypotheticals about what, ha what happens if we separate the lots. And um, I, wanna, I do want to just get at talk of it for a minute about the proposed replacement trees in, in a second, but, um, but we did have a lot of these, uh, talk about a lot of these points last time. Um, I think we reached a place where we felt comfortable enough to get to drafting a resolution to then have this public hearing and then listening to um, any public comment. I appreciate the public comment very much. Um, it, for the most part, um, doesn't change my mind all that much on um, essentially I, where I thought we landed last time, which is that we should find the best way we can to allow this to move forward while being as sensitive as we possibly can. Um, I think we talk about hypotheticals a lot, right? What happens if, you know, one of the lots gets sold and there's two different owners and what happens in any kind of scenario? But we also need to think about the, not just hypotheticals, but where we are today. And we have one property owner um, and will likely be one property owner for the foreseeable future that has, you know, private property and wants to make some changes to it. And, and um, you know, it, it has come before us and, and we are charged with, uh, thinking through what is the most responsible way to act on this request. Um, so to that end, can we, I don't know who the right person is, but just, just talk through the replacement and the replacement trees, again, to your point, Bob, um, do take this neighbor and other neighbors into account. That's, that's, that's sort of the point of the replacement is to think through um, what impacts might there be on adjoining property owners. And then, Tom, I think you made this point that while there's a concern of a private property owner, you know, an action of one private property owner impeding the other private property owner's enjoyment, uh, there's the reverse, right? There's, uh, these are all, these are private properties that, um, you know, there, you do have certain rights and, and, and um, I guess uh, we're trying to weigh, weigh those uh, rights here. So can we talk about the, the replacement trees? Yeah, Frank, can you jump in here and address that, please? Sure. Uh, number one, I'd like to uh, just clarify a few items. One is that the condition of the trees were not done by uh, myself as a landscape architect, but by a licensed arborist, which actually is the arborist that the, uh, the town of Newcastle uses, which is Olmstead Tree Service. Uh, that's in a report that is part uh, your board has seen, and that's how the condition of the trees were determined by the arborist uh, after reviewing the trees. Uh, Dennis has been out there, and I agree with you. From one side of the, um, if you look at those pictures, one side is taken from the um, uh, Mr. Gutzeit's uh, main home, and it, they, they because of that one blue spruce, they look like they're in good condition. But then you look at the opposite side, and they're not in good condition. There are two trees on uh, the right, the south side or the right side that are within the 15 foot buffer, and they are actually a huge. Um, they're listed there at the top as number one and two. They're uh, very large very poor condition and not only poor but they're hazard trees because of the type of variety they are and Dennis would agree with this that the branches you could if you go there you'll see fall right out of the trees um this is interesting the uh, the neighbors um comments because we've gone out of our way after two meetings with the environmental conservation board which the uh, neighbor has been involved with uh, to preserve every tree on the north side or left uh, or the left side of the property to preserve that root, uh, view shed uh, to screen this property. This property has a swimming pool and a house on it. Mr. Gutside has gone out of his way not only to screen from the neighbors on each side in our plan, but preserve every tree that's possible 
on the north side or the neighbor's um, uh, left side property at number 65. There are no trees being removed on that side at all. Uh, there are actually trees being supplemented. The trees that are going to be uh, replaced, do you want to go to the landscape, uh, the, the plan, uh, planting plan, uh, Brad? Mm -hmm. Here, just zoom down a little. We're replacing, number one, we're, we're trying to reestablish uh, the tree line along um, Seven Bridges Road. So three and a half inch caliper native swamp maples are being planted along the road. Uh, because this, we're not looking this strictly as a preservation of, of uh, surrounding the property with more trees. Uh, the idea is to bring in a habitat which has been destroyed in the front due to trees dying over the years. So six huge uh, swamp red maples are being planted along the seven bridges. Then there are uh, tree, not all these trees on this plant list, by the way, uh, are, are part of the replacement. There's a lot more trees here being planted than the replacement trees. The only trees used for replacements are the ones with the star next to them, which is the uh, red maples, the uh, arborvitae, only the larger ones, the uh, <clears throat> the understory. Dennis has required has asked if we added some understory trees, so we added the uh, red buds and the flowering dogwood, the amelanchias, the uh, green giant, and the spruce aren't even calculated into the replacements, but we're doing them. So there is a tremendous, there's over 50 trees being planted on this site, not the uh, 28 that uh, are noted. There are existing 39 trees existing that will be protected on the site. So this is a heavily forested site, especially on the north side and the, um, the, the north right quadrant and along the front. There's a, a driveway easement on the right or south side uh, that we're trying to screen out because there's a driveway of the neighbor's driveway there. Uh, but those aren't even included in the replacement trees. They're just part of the screening. So this is quite an extensive planting plan. It's not only a tree replacement plan. This is uh, the only trees that are part of that are the, um, the uh, uh, with the stars. The rest are all, uh, go to the planting plan again, Brad, move over. Sure. Just move it to the uh, right. No, opposite way. Only those trees with these stars next to them are calculated as replacement trees. All the other trees are just additional trees that are, that are part of this landscape plan. So there's a, an extensive amount of trees being planted here. As but far as the fence, the pool fence is four foot high. Any, uh, and that's part of the pool code, the pool has to be fenced. And uh, yeah. a, a four foot fence isn't going to prevent any that's animals from, uh, especially a deer, from getting over to the, uh, through the properties. And I, I think Dennis and Rudy confirmed that uh, to Frank's point, the trees that are marked with the asterisk, those are the ones that you use to calculate and, and to determine that they actually exceed uh, the town code requirement. And so what I think Frank's point is, in addition to exceeding uh, what is required under the code, he's really, he's, he's playing much, much more uh, that would exceed uh, that standard even by more. Right, I, I think the only, it has no bearing, the only correction I would make is I think you'd want the asterisk next to the Norway spruces versus those stooges based on, these are just my notes when I calculated it, but it gets there, yes, you've exceeded. It's an exceedance by, by far, yes. By 31 trees. Yeah. Yes. So, um, um, you know, I'm, I'm satisfied. Uh, and and uh, as long as those, you know, the additional trees are referenced in the resolution as well, not just the placement ones, because if that's what's being proposed, then I want to make sure that that's being codified. Um, you know, when I'm looking at it quickly, I don't see it, but it, it, might, it might be in here. Do you know if it's in here? Uh, it should be on page two, lines 32. Uh, 
So I think it goes down from 32 down to 36. I yeah, think okay. it's, it's picked up there. Yeah, okay. Because again, I think we're incorporating by reference the actual planting plan that the applicant has submitted. Right. Can I ask a problem question this one? Victoria, can you speak into the mic? Sorry. May I please ask a couple of clarifying questions to Mr. Giuliano? Sure. Um, Mr. Giuliano, um, I, I totally hear what you're saying, and that's why I preface my comments with um, the appreciation for keeping a lot of the trees on the northern side uh, between the properties, so I'm grateful for that. One thing you mentioned is um, the fence is four feet. Somewhere along the line, I understood the fence to be six feet. Am I getting that wrong? I don't think it's yeah, relevant. Yeah, can, can, can we just stick it's to what's actually, yeah, relevant to us? Well, yeah, just to what's relevant before us. Okay. Yeah. And so I guess I'm an actual person telling you my perception of the of the trees that are being replaced, right? So I totally hear you. The number is great, right? They're not native trees, which is, you know, so if you were, you know, that's fine. And people can choose the, the trees they want. Um, my concern would not be that area towards the seven bridges. It's, there's no there. Isn't really a lot there right now. It's fine to be able to see through it. It's part of the character of the, you know, all the houses there. Um, I'm not totally opposed to that, but what I just want to accentuate that it doesn't meet a lot of these and the height of the trees doesn't replace that view shed or some of those deciduous, really tall trees. Um, I mean, I love conifers. I'm not nothing against conifers, but. Uh, I just want to say that the you know, additional trees, yes, they are additional trees, and trees are wonderful in number, but it doesn't really address the concern that I have about what it will feel like. Um, again, I, I mentioned right up front the tension in, the, between the interests of different property owners. It's very real. Um, and again, I, I come in peace with this, but there will be a gap for me in seeing. And again, no one's, I'm not entitled to everything that I want, you know, so I keep, believe me, the words coming out of my mouth. Uh, but in this is such an unusual situation, I guess my hope is, you know, whatever can be left there, or, or if there's an eye to trying to keep the, some canopy or replace some of the canopy, um, I, that's not to say that I don't think this is a very generous tree replacement plan. I appreciate the efforts around it. Uh, I guess it's just some of the losses of some of them, even though they may be in decline. Um, so uh, that, that's the perspective of someone who actually already lives here and whose expectation had been the one acre property, um, you know, uh, surrounded by buffer. The one acre is a minimum, though, not a maximum. The one acre zoning is a minimum? Yeah. Right. So that anyone can convert their property into a two acre? Yeah. They... You can do. So not, that's not what's happening. <laughs> no, no. Okay. This is still one acre lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the remaining is two lots. And, you know, it might be interesting to go see the property. I mean, just, you know, again, I, I with respect that I'm sure there was one that desire to move it fast, and I get that, and they've been working on the house for a long time. I've been a good doobie. You know, I've been, haven't, you know, I've been very patient with how that's been happening, and I, I understand they, where they, what they want to do, and it's great. But it might be um, interesting for you to see it. Okay, thank you for listening. Okay, thank you. Okay. Do we have any other questions or anyone else? Members of the public, anyone with a hand up? Yeah. Hi. Nick, yes. Yes, sir. I, I'll pop in for just a second. I, I agree with what Tom said. Uh, we What we do is we have rules about trees. I'm curious as to how old these trees are that are in poor condition. Um, you know, I think a maple yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, Dennis, and a maple, a maple tree is about a 30 year liver. You know, it lives that long. And if it's, if these trees are, you know, planted 30 years ago or whatever the right number is, then I think that they're going to come down anyway. Um, you know, we, we also try to accommodate the thought of viewsheds, although it's not really in the regulations that we have, as I recollect. And so I think that the, the landowners here are, are, in their within the the bounds of our rules, but I would think that it may would be a way that that there could be a little bit of a compromise and a few more trees left uh, without bringing them down, if um, you know they seem to be in a good place relative to watering and 
uh, sunshine and things like that. So I could see a, a, a touch of a compromise here, you know, for a few trees, but by and large, my sense is that the property owner is within his rights, period. So I just wanted to comment on something earlier because Tom, you, you and Nate mentioned regarding uh, whether I agreed or disagreed with the condition. Because obviously I evaluated this uh, first as a permit that was issued to me that I, meaning the environmental coordinator, that I had to eventually deny when we realized the jurisdiction changed. And it's like, no, oh, this goes before the planning board. And so I had my initial notes and I just had a column that was, do I require tree replacement or not? I didn't, you know, I didn't really get into, is it good, is it fair, is it, and for the majority of these trees, I was in the yes camp. There were a couple that I said no. But when the application came in, regardless of what the condition assessment was by Olmstead, they, they were willing to meet those replacement requirements. And, you know, obviously the board uh, has, uh, you know, the ability to, you know, make suggestions to try to reduce the number of removals and, and, and whatnot. But the way the code is written and having this conversation, you know, with, with the town prosecutor and town council, I'm like, am I to understand that if, if an applicant is willing to meet the replacement requirements, then you, you know, I'm talking about like say a tree, I receive an application. I, I cannot prevent the removal of a tree. I cannot deny the permit and say, no, you, you can't remove that tree when you're willing to meet the replacement requirements of the company. The understanding that I've received from both uh, legal parties is, yes, that's the correct interpretation of the code. Fair enough. So um, that, that's important. Um, however, unless I'm mistaken, um, unless I'm mistaken, the planning board has discretion on these matters. Correct. And um, the question is for me, for you, is not whether you have the authority to deny the removal of a tree, but whether in your assessment these trees are in poor condition or are dead, which is what is being attested to in the application. And by just looking at photographs, which is not the right way to determine these things, but that's what we have in front of us for tonight, by looking at these photographs, it appears to me that they aren't diseased. It appears to me that they are in good, good health. And you know, maybe on the other side of the tree, it doesn't look so good. But I don't, I don't have that evidence in front of me. And I was looking for perhaps some um, information from you, if you um, have any memory of the condition of the trees whether you want to give us your opinion about that now or whether you'd like to go out and take a look again. Um, that's what I was trying to determine. Okay, so on, on that subject then, uh, I do uh, recall, um, and I, I think it was shown, um, maybe Mr. Winston uh, produced them, that, right, there is a, uh, it's a black and white cookie of trees. One side, you know, looks one way and the other side looks another way, but I remember part of, my assessment, you know, now that they've reached this stage in life is that, yeah, they were planted too close together. And that, you know, to me, uh, I, I didn't get a chance to speak to the arborist from Olmstead, but I think that's, you know, part of what went into the condition assessment, because it's like, not only are they not, you know, in great condition now, but moving forward, you know, they're all showing signs of, uh, of decline and they're planted too close together. So the, the prognosis is not good. So that, the prognosis... Yeah. Sorry. Yes. So the prognosis is not good under the current condition being planted too close together, but forests thin out over time right. and trees survive the thinning out, you know, and, that, and so I mean, where I'm going with this is a, a couple of things. First of all, could these be thinned, pick the trees that are in, 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 in a good condition and the ones that um, are in poor condition, clearly the ones who are, that are dead, but the ones that are in poor condition be taken out as a as a way to um, not guarantee, but to hopefully um, increase the likelihood of the continued health of the remaining ones, right? And is that something which and leave the ones that are healthy? And there's a Norway spruce 
spruce and a hemlock here, which are a 10 inch caliper, I think. The total number of trees being taken out here is like 200 caliper inches if you add them all up. And it's, it's just a lot. Now, I'm not suggesting that, therefore, by that measure alone, but it seems to me it's a, it's a really big ask for the purposes of some of which are the purposes of being able to look from one piece of property to another. And the view shed, the, the, the view shed um, principle or the view shed um, um, <clears throat> criteria that we might apply, actually I think is for scenic view sheds, not for view sheds between pieces of property. Right. So it's a, it's a different, that's a whole different category of things. And I don't think that should necessarily apply here. So I guess I'm asking, there is no, I understand the purpose and if this is going to be done, the predicate is these trees are going to be taken out for the purposes. The predicate is these trees will be taken out in order to be able to have a clear view from one piece of property to another. That's the if this is going to be done. And I'm, I don't think that this board has the obligation to honor that predicate. The board has the obligation to figure out what the right thing to do here is with respect to all the other things that we worry about. So I just would like to be sure that that we are really looking at this in a way which is, I think, maybe a little bit more careful with the facts of the case and having to do with the health of the trees and what else could be done. And if the trees are thinned, if the trees are um, somehow better taken care of if the, the trees that uh, are in good condition remain. That doesn't mean I don't think that this property owner is going to be able to see from one side of the property to the other. I mean, maybe they could be limbed up. Maybe there are other things that could happen here instead of just, well, let's just take them all out. So that's where I'm going with this is a little bit of a, a, a lighter hand, a lighter touch, a little bit more sensitive touch. Uh, with respect to what's going on here in the interest of also honoring the 30 foot buffer separation between the two pieces of property. I'm, I'm wondering if there isn't some way to come together and, and get, you know, everybody wins something out of this. And I think that some things that we want to win are important things. Or that I want to win, sorry. But I think it are the important for the planning board to do. Mm -hmm. Can, can you address some of Mr. Curley's comments, please? Yes, please. Uh, I'd like to just backtrack a lot further than uh, the planning board. We had uh, two conservation board meetings. At the first one, the neighbor spoke and we mitigated the plan. Originally, there was going to be 29 trees removed, none on that North's property line. They were trees that were in poor condition on the south property line. Uh, we were asked to cut that back by the conservation board. Then there was a site meeting by the conservation board to review these. Uh, that sorry, sorry, just to correct, just to correct you, it was the environmental review, review board. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. It was the, the environmental review board. board. I'm sorry, the environmental board. review board. There was um, two, two uh, Zooms and one site meeting. Uh, with the board. And at that meeting, they didn't, they, did, they asked us if we would cut back on the tree removal, and we did. So that has already been kind of uh, looked uh, into and compromised on. So there are trees now on the south side that if, if I was looking at a safety and an aesthetic view, they should be removed, but we're leaving them. You could see in this photo, what the, what the trees really look like. Uh, they were planted probably when the property was subdivided. What, what view is that, excuse me, Frank, what view is that? Is that the south side? Uh, that's this, is, right? this is the view from the swimming pool to, uh, from the, um, the okay. this picture is taken from the swimming pool. Okay. Uh, back well, towards the, the property. property. This, is the, this is the view issue. If these trees were removed, we would have clear line of right. sight. These are the trees that we really care about. I got it. Right. These okay. are the these are the trees we're talking about. So um, that's actually super helpful, I think, to know that there was a a, a, a larger 
uh, request on the table and then that, that, that there was a, a movement backwards. From my perspective, um, uh, Tom, I think you're right that um, the questions being asked of Dennis are, are helpful and interesting, but it, you know, it's within our purview to, to figure this out, whether what, what we think is appropriate, given all the concerns. Um, the way I see it, um, there's a property owner who is looking to take down some trees. Um, we are not that concerned about the habitat question. Uh, I agree with that. Um, we want to make sure that replacement is sufficient. I, I think, from my perspective, that has been satisfied and then some. Um, we want to make sure that the absolute minimum amount of trees is being removed. It sounds like we've already made steps in that direction. I'm satisfied that this is sufficient. This this picture up here is actually very helpful uh, to me. Um, and so um, I'm satisfied and I think that uh, uh, we can, from my perspective, move forward here. Um, I, I think we are, are in a place where um we've asked all the questions and um at least i i've heard all the answers um, i actually do have one other thought just a little bit again with this question of you know the, the the two tax lots um if the property line wasn't there if the two lots were merged into one one would the would the property owner have to come before us to remove these trees uh, I don't know if the quantity of trees would be sufficient to trigger a, a permit, but certainly the, the, the issue that's before us, right. which is the buffer, and the, the, no. So, so again, well, can, I, can I just interject for a second? Because the really the jurisdiction of the planning board here is triggered because some of the trees are within the clearing and grading limit line that was established by the planning board. So, but for the trees being removed within the clearing and grading limit line this would have been an administrative permit. So that's really the, the, the trigger for your jurisdiction um, at the planning board. The, um, the trees within the regulated buffer zone are subject to removal. They may be removed subject to a tree permit under chapter 121. The reason why you are now the approval authority for that is because of the clearing and grading limit line jurisdiction. So once you have jurisdiction over one part of it, you have jurisdiction over everything. Got it. Super helpful. And we, we talked about this clearing and grading limit line last time. And basically, I think we agreed that it is uh, a little, I don't know, it's not the typical clearing and grading limit line. It really creates this thin buffer between these properties. And to me, it's not, I mean, uh, you know, but for this, you know, imaginary line, property line, um, this really wouldn't even be before us. I don't think it's an imaginary property line. There's no such thing as an imaginary property line. It's either a property line or there isn't a property line. It's true. That, that, that divides these two pieces. I, I understand, but, okay. but but it's the same property owner on both sides of it. And to me... Um, it's not the same property. Same property owner. Yeah, same property owner on both sides. Um, I, I guess, uh, I, you know, I've... I've heard enough and I'm, I'm comfortable moving forward, I, but I've already said that a few times. Okay. And these are the nine trees. What you're counting here are the exact nine trees that are within the clearing and grading limit line. And if any of those trees look healthy to anyone on the board, they're not. And uh, I agree with the arborist. I was not involved with that, um, that analysis, but... Um, these trees were planted uh, when the property was subdivided as small little hemlocks and spruces and a mix of kind of ornamentals. And they've just grown into this uh, mess because they're so close, they're just, they're just unhealthy. Well, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't like the fact that uh, we don't have anything that happens later on if and when there's a, a, a change in ownership. The applicant has a solution here, and that is that they merge the lots, this all goes away. And if you merge the lots, we don't have to deal with this, and you have your wide open area. So for whatever reason you don't want to do that, that's fine. That's absolutely your, 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 your issue. I, I agree with Tom that I think this could be a little bit lighter touch. I think notwithstanding the condition, now that I understand that the conditions are probably promoted by the closeness of the, the planting that a thinning and a limbing up of these uh, trees, a few of the trees, clearing some of them, 
would achieve the open look that the applicant is looking for, but at the same token maintain the some semblance of the clearing grading limit line and the uh, the, the 15 foot uh, buffer on each side. So uh, the more I look at this and now that I better understand what the where we're coming from on the poor condition, where it seems to me it may be a little bit more subjective. We all have all seen trees when they're planted close together, what happens? They lose the base of the tree, they look very ugly, the needles fall off, etc. when they're uh, conifers. And, uh, but if you have a, a, a mist uh, in here, some deciduous trees, and if you uh, limb those up, to 12, 15 feet, you have basically a wide open expanse of turf underneath and a perfectly fine view. The same with uh, conifers. If these are so bad at the bottom, I understand that. I, I see it in the picture. It seems to me that some of these could be limbed up. I'm not suggesting that you don't. I, I think thinning it out would, would make sense. But the issue here of, of a view shed, uh, or, or not the view shed, I don't want to use that word because that's that has nothing to do with this. But the view between the two lots, um, what we're hearing from the applicant, um, it doesn't have to be achieved with a wide open turf, uh, just grass. So it can be achieved, it seems to me, with uh, something I think Dick was alluding to, and I think Tom was alluding to, lighter touch, and limbing up and thinning some of these trees. Chairman, I want to mention, it looks like we have a member of the public on Zoom with um, a hand raised. Okay, sure. Can we recognize that person? Hello? Yes, hi. Hi. I have laryngitis, so I apologize. My name is Margaret Ferguson, and I live on 75 Seven Bridges Road, so I'm the third lot north um, from this property. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody, everybody involved, for giving such serious consideration to this issue. It is very refreshing and very encouraging. So whichever way it comes down, I thank everybody. I also thank the family that's got the application in, they're paying a lot more attention to this issue than many people um, do in this community, including in this area. We've had some lots very much decimated in this area by people who are a lot less sensitive. Maybe they're within their rights, but a lot less sensitive to uh, tree removal. So I do thank everybody for giving such serious consideration to this issue. Um, in terms of the trees that you're discussing, I support the idea that if any of them, one or two, is in such a condition that it can be preserved. I hope it will be preserved. The photo that you just flashed to me, um, yeah, it shows some uh, dieback at the near the ground level, but I'm a lifelong gardener and I take care of my own yard. And what I see there doesn't tell me really the condition of the trees. Um, in terms of the assessment made by Olmsted uh, a number of years ago, uh, before Dennis, uh, it was when Dennis's predecessor uh, was with the town. I can't remember his name right now, but um, I came home one day and I found a, 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 ma a mature, healthy American elm flagged for removal by the county. And I believe they use Olmstead too. And Olmstead had misidentified that tree as a dead um, ash tree. And um, and it wasn't. It's an American elm tree. And so uh, it was quickly when I called called the town, um, he took care of it. Um, and I asked him how so, a tr an arborist could make such a grievous mistake between a healthy living American elm tree and a dead ash tree. And he said, I can't explain it to you. So my only point is, you know, it is a matter of interpretation sometimes and sometimes mistakes do happen. So I support the effort to maybe a little lighter touch. Um, on these trees. Um, and, you know, I also uh, appreciate the uh, understory trees going in there and the planting by Seven Bridges Road, because right now it really is nothing um, aesthetically to speak of. And also it's, it, I don't think it's really sort of, uh, uh, very supportive to the environment. It's very bland. You could have more plantings near the ground that would provide a lot more benefit to the creatures around us than what's there right now. So the understory trees, perhaps some shrubs in the area would be a lot better than what's bordering on seven bridges right now. So that's my only point is that I would hope I support the effort to maybe look at the, the, I can still, I see that picture too, but it's, you know, with the, they don't look that bad to me. I don't know what to, you know, maybe a tree can be cut out. Um, uh, I I don't know if they have Willie Adelgid, for example. They could, um, and if they had Willie Adelgid, they've had some, if those are some of its hemlocks. I can see. I guess some Norway spruce. I'm not sure what else is in there, but if they had Willie Adelgid, Adelgid does cause thinning out, 
And if it's treated, it um, the needles will come back. So, um, you know, and treated with uh, something that is that is safe. So um, anyway, those are my points for the evening. And I do thank everyone for putting such effort into this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Virgin, thanks for your comments. Frank, can you again address, please, the help of the trees and whether thinning out would make a difference? Since these are all conifers in here, they're all evergreens. Once one is pulled, once you start thinning, you end up, and they do not, at this age of the tree, once you pull out some trees and they're going to have a dead side, or in most cases here, three dead sides, they're not going to uh, rebloom out. Now, we've got to look at this in perspective. And maybe um, this is what we're looking at to remove. And in exchange, we're planting 50 new trees. I see a balance that is far more towards a positive and longer life of newer trees. These trees, if they were left in this condition, provide, they're going to be gone in a few years anyway. Uh, one way or the other, if you read the report by Olmsted, they have cankers at the base. Um, this is what we're looking at to remove, to gain for the village 50 new trees. This is, uh, the balance here is definitely towards the, the, the new plan. This is not uh, aesthetic. It's uh, limiting them up we're going to be looking at, at conifers. When you limb up a con conifer, uh, you're destroying the whole idea of what a conifer looks like. They grow, grow to the ground. Um, and they do not have woolly adelgid. They have uh, some canker. Uh, if you read that uh, report, they're in quite detail of what's wrong with each of these trees within the clearing and grading limit line. Would it be possible, Frank, then to, as part of your planting plan, to um, replace these with a few, I say really a few, smattering deciduous trees that will grow and they'll be limbed up and you'll have your view. Whether you want to plant, you know, sugar maples or whatever you want to plant. Um, why can't we do that then? If you have to clear that out and we still have a few <clears throat> new plants in there, you know, two and a half, three inch caliber, uh, uh, again, not a wall, not a hedge, but uh, something that looks uh, very natural and uh, that's you know consistent with what we see, what we see around here. That would be up to Mr. Gutsai if he uh, um, amenable towards that. That's not my decision. And, but to, you know, to, to what end? That, that doesn't address um, th this neighbor's concerns from you know as far as height, um, and I don't know that it you know. Doesn't it take years for them to grow high enough to limb up anyway? Uh, it depends on what tree it is, but uh, it, well, it could take a number of years. My, my concern on this is still um, maintaining at least some sort of um, identification of this 30-foot buffer. We do have two separate properties here, and that is what we do here. In, one acre, in this one-acre zone, we have a 15-foot buffer on either side. And we certainly understand that it's a reasonable request to have the space so that you can see, but the same token, and I'm not concerned about the height. I mean, I, I don't, I, I, I dismiss, frankly, that issue of the view shed because I don't think that's what we, we talk about with view sheds. Uh, someone else's property and, and what's on someone else's property, you know, if you want to enjoy that property, buy the property. So um, that's not a concern. The concern is my concern. Chairman, <clears throat> I have, Mr. Chairman, I have to take about a 10 or a 12 minute break to take care okay. of a personal problem. Okay. Thank you, Dick. Sorry. So um, th 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 that's my concern, um, to maintain uh, um, some sort of demarcation that is um, at least um, somewhat in in consistent with uh, uh, our setback rule. And I, well, I, you look I, at that I appreciate what Frank is saying. Frank, I appreciate what you're saying that with cankers and other conditions, and again, I haven't looked at that the detailed condition report now for several weeks, but I can certainly appreciate and understand that you as a professional making those comments. But there is another solution that would be to uh, put a few trees in. I don't know what it would be. You guys could figure that out with the applicant, three, four trees, whatever it might be. That's my concern. My concern is, is maintaining that, uh, um, shall we say, the integrity of the 15-foot buffer. Mr. Chairman, again, if I could jump in for a second. Sure. If, if your concern comment is about the integrity of the buffer because of the enforcement mechanism down the road, 
I, I'd like to think I could work with Jennifer, work with staff in ensuring that upon a transfer, there would be a mechanism in place so that it would be enforced, so the integrity would be restored upon the two lots being owned separately. So to, to plant a couple of trees now, to protect the integrity of the buffer out of a, a fear or a concern that however many years from now, the area would not be restored, we could legally put in place a document that could be enforced, the town would certainly get notice of any new owner taking title. And at that point in time, the town has the enforcement power to require the replanting to be established. And I know the resolution doesn't require a declaration, go back to that concept of requiring a declaration to be recorded, that way the world is on notice that anyone taking title would have to restore and comply with the that buffer requirement in the town code. I mean, if there's language that can satisfy mm -hmm. our council, um, then maybe that addresses this issue. I think so. I mean, we've kind of wrestled with this language and, and, yeah. the, and the triggering of the language. So um, we, we didn't want to do it as a um, uh, something that would be recorded. We thought that might be onerous, but um, what do you think, Jennifer? Yeah, I mean, that that is um, sort of the next level of enforcement um, that you can apply here. Um, we have the condition in the resolution, uh, which I believe was going to be a note on the plan as well. The declaration of restrictive covenants recorded in the county clerk's office does put you know, should put the, the new owner on notice, um, you know, certainly that should be pulled up when that new owner takes title. It'll be part of the title report that there is that restriction in the property. Um, and we can fold into that uh, an affirmative obligation, either on behalf of the purchaser or the seller to notify the town within a certain amount of time of the, the, the property conveyance. Um, not just the assessor's office through the filing of a deed, but to affirmatively notify the development department of the property transfer with a, with a copy of the Declaration of Restrictive Covenants so everyone is aware of the obligation. And that's a great point. I mean, in, in larger development projects, if there's a transfer of an interest in a project, oftentimes that kind of notice to a municipality is required. So that step, the declaration, Mr. Chairman, you used the word onerous. Might it be onerous to a single family a lot? Yes, but I, I hear your concern on what you're wrestling with. So I think the compromise would be to, to, to go down that path, implement those steps to alleviate your concern and allow the boot sites to have that line of sight that they desire for so long as they own both properties. And Jennifer, would that be something that would be uh, triggered on both properties, even if one is uh, transferred? Seems yes. like it has to be. Yeah, I think it would be to the extent there are trees being removed from the buffer on both sides of the lot line, then yes, I think that would be a, um, filed against both properties. Okay. Well, that would, that would help me a lot uh, with, with just clearing it out at this point. Well, if it doesn't, I'm sorry, it doesn't help. I know, I know. <laughs> I feared it didn't. <laughs> it's it's sorry okay. for this to go on and on and on, but, um, you know, it's, it, these uh, clearing and grading limit lines give us no end of pain. And, um, you almost regret that we have them, but I am very happy that we do. And they serve a purpose and there's a reason for them. And in many cases, I wish that we could be more aggressive with them. But um, our legislation is our legislation and, and we live by it. And living by it, I guess I would ask the, the following hypothetical. The next time somebody comes in who wants to take trees out of the clearing and grading limit line because they want to see all the way to the limit of their property. And they make the argument that they have a right to see all the way to the limit of their property. And therefore, they ought to be able to take out the trees in the clearing and grading limit line. What do we say to them if we approve taking these trees out? Because it's the same condition, essentially. This is a little bit different, I think, very special. And I, I think we would distinguish it on that basis because we have the same property owner. I mean, I agree with you. Otherwise, it's... Okay, so here I have a proposal. Uh -huh. um, maybe this gets me around my problem. I still think we ought to find a way to save some of these trees. Mm -hmm. yeah, I understand. There are, the way, from my reading of this, there are four, way, four Norway spruce that are we're being told are planted so close together that that they all need to come out and I, i'm not buying that uh, 
those are the ones that are directly in the in in the view from one property to another and then there's a hem, couple of hemlocks there one's in bad shape apparently and one's in good shape but they all have to come out i'm, I'm just not buying that but maybe the way to get around this is just to let's just vacate the clearing and grading limit line if this is a special case let's get rid of the clearing and grading limit line so we don't have this sort of glaring condition here that we are and just declare that in this particular case it's moot well that's interesting so we don't have the special case we're yes. saying yeah but we're allowing this well, to makes it a very grade. special case because yeah exactly we've removed them yep and then make the other distinctive uh, distinctions so that gets me over the the, the you know the, the yep. code problem that we have here you know our, our responsibilities mm -hmm. Uh, but I still think we have a responsibility to the trees themselves. And if yeah. there's a way to save some of them and still satisfy the property owner that, he, that he, they are essentially getting, you know, enough of a, of a uh, visual link between the two pieces of property, then I think we ought to make the effort to at least save that one good hemlock. There's no reason for that one to come out. And uh, perhaps uh, thin out, uh, maybe save a couple of the other... Uh, Norway spruce, but if they are in fact in in fact in poor condition, then you know that's the end of that. So uh, my suggestion is to go down that path. What's the mechanism on that, Jennifer? I guess I'm not understanding how the end result would be different because if you're removing the clearing and grading limit lines altogether, you're removing your jurisdiction right. for, with respect to any tree removal. So, because your, your your jurisdiction is hinged only on the fact that those clearing and grading limit lines exist, mm -hmm. and they're proposing to remove trees within those lines. Oh, interesting. And but for that, it would be a tree removal permit by by Dennis. Interesting. And that tree removal permit um, would just calculate replacements versus what's being taken down, right? Yeah, it'd be essentially where you want to go. Right. But but we still. I mean, I would have to try to get some provision of it since they're being removed in the regulated landscape buffer, then that wrestling match would be, you know, with my mirror image, I guess, as opposed to the board. Um, oh, well. <laughs> you know, I do, you know, th there's this question of the condition of the trees or what the condition of the trees is being questioned, uh, more accurately said. And I, I do want to be fair to the licensed, right? They're licensed arborists, certified, certified arborists um, that the town uses, right? In, in, in the absence of evidence otherwise, you know, professional evidence otherwise, and we have some photos, but I mean, you guys are way better at this than I am. I mean, but I have no idea what I'm looking at when I look at photos like this. I can't tell you if the tree is healthy or not. Um, but we do have, uh, you know, Olmstead, the licensed uh, certified arborist who have told us, you know, and if someone is claiming otherwise, then, I, then, then there should be some proof to that. But, uh, but short of that, what we have, we have to go with the information that we have. Um, uh, so I, I don't know that we need to put the uh, assessment in question. Um, but um, uh, however you guys... <laughs> want to get to a point where you feel comfortable right um i get i understand that i understand there's questions of precedent i understand there's a question your your, your last question tom is a, is a good one right let's say these what these were two separate property owners and or in any other instance a property owner says i want to eliminate all all the trees going back to uh, my property line uh what would we do then well this is a unique condition there are two properties with a single property owner we are talking about a potential um you know uh, restrictive covenant that addresses the issue if this in the future does become two separate property owners um which i think satisfies um some of the concerns um i, I would love to figure out a way to satisfy all of the concerns um i'm not sure quite how to get there so on the subject of the um of uh Olmstead's review yep. and their um, determination that the tree's in poor condition. 
um, did they make the determination that the tree needed to be removed? Or did they just say, well, it's in poor condition? Right. And is that justification to remove a tree? I'm, I'm 74, just turned 74. I'm in poor condition. <laughs> <laughs> now, maybe that's justification to remove me, but uh, I want to give a tree a better chance than you guys might give me. I, I, I seriously, th I mean, you go through, I walk in the forest every day. Yep. All you know, right. And you see trees that I've seen the same tree there that looks like it's in poor condition. It's still there 10 years later. Yep. So, yeah, that's fair. Happy birthday. <laughs> you stick back. No, yeah. Okay. So how do we, how, how do we, um, let's see, let me see if I can suggest what I think, because we got to, we have to yeah, move on, help these people move <laughs> on. Um, I think that um, a, I really think that, that just because a tree is in poor condition is a justification for its removal. That's what I think. Um, I can understand the desire of a property owner to want to remove some trees and with the uh, with the objective of getting a better landscape environment for their home. That's certainly a legitimate desire. Um, I am looking at 200 caliper inches being taken out and the planting schedule. It looks to me like there's 15 inches put in now. Dennis, well, maybe my calculations are wrong, but that's what's on the plan schedule here. So I want to be sure that we get that right. That just doesn't seem to be the right ratio here. Maybe if a tree is called is is in poor condition, you don't have to you don't have to replace it. I don't know what the I forget what the what the code says. The tree code says about that. Maybe that's why there's only like 15, 20 inches in replacement trees for 200 being taken out. But it seems to me like like that the unless I'm wrong about that, it seems to me that the that the that the ratio is out of balance. Am I wrong about that, Dennis? I'm well, looking... we only have to replace a percentage of the total, and based on the trees that are less than eighteen inches, it's just uh, less than eighteen inches. Less than, it's it's twenty five percent of that, and there's only a few that rose right. to the fifty percent. So that's why that that number got cut. And um, I guess to your point, you know, about the code, the, the only um, recommendation uh, that's listed that I could recall from a certified arborist is, is to determine if a tree rises to the level or meets like a hazardous condition that it could be removed without a permit. And there is a um, caveat in there that, you know, the environmental coordinator may require, you know, site visit, photo justification to make that determination. But, and I'm happy that it doesn't exist, that the condition of a tree necessarily dictates replacement because there are those that can create their own condition of decline by, you know, over trimming, over limbing, planting them too close in the first place, and then, you know, having them decline as they advance. So I... I've used that as my latitude to say, well, I'm not just looking at today's condition, I'm looking at the totality and the time, and, and these trees were not given the best opportunity, therefore I think they should be replaced. So, okay, we have so, to leave right. so let me see if I can make one comment. Just sure, you have to come up here. Yeah, please, come Sorry. on. Just, uh, just to clarify, I think maybe the caliper inch issue might be, if you're adding up those caliper inches there, which I think is how you got to your 15 to 20, yeah. you have to multiply by the quantity. You see to the left. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Thank you. It's it's a total game changer. Thank you. Okay. Also, I'd like to say that to uh, get back to how that the trees that are in poor condition are included in that calculation. By the town code, the only trees that one would not uh, have to be replaced are those that are dead. So anything that's in poor, fair, good condition has to be calculated as a replacement tree. Thank you. Uh, and it is in this schedule, correct? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. So this is what I would feel comfortable with. I think that we should not vacate the clearing and grading limit line. I think it ought to stay there because there is a property line there. And so we ought to maintain mm -hmm. that zone. 
I think that we can make a special dispensation because of the special condition here, because we have, right? But that's got to be very clear in the resolution. And it seems to me that if we can get some stipulation upon transfer of property or whatever the right uh, trigger is to, to, um, to get the clearing and grading limit line, the, that zone replanted as a buffer, I think we ought to find a way to do that. That'd be great. And I do think that the healthy trees shouldn't come down. I don't, I don't understand why we're taking down there two 10 inch caliper trees here that according to the schedule, a hemlock and the other one is a- Norway yeah, maple. Is a, is a- Norway uh, maple, yeah. Norway maple. If we could, if we could keep those, uh, it seems to me that, that there's no reason why we ought to be taking down uh, these trees within the great clearing and grading limit line if they're healthy. That's how I feel. That's what I think maybe can get us through this. Well, um, as a minimum. Yeah, I, I, that would work for me. Um, yeah, and as long as we come up with legal. Uh, language that Brad has suggested that we, we can come up with that would be triggered and the town would be on notice, the prospective buyers in the future would be no, on notice. But I don't know if you want to go as far as you want to have a contingent planting plan ready, but you know, might be too far. I, I think that's too that's far an overreach. Yeah. I wonder to what extent this recommendation is acceptable to the applicant. Yeah. Well, I, yeah I expect to hear from them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to go unremarked. I guess that's the drum roll. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, thank you all that for that comment. I mean, that's what I was going to jump in with. I mean, Mr. Curley, everything that you outlined are all steps that that we would agree to, I think. But those two trees, that that is part of our removal plan. Um, and I'm just not. I guess the comp the compensation of all the tree replacement offsets more than offsets the impact of removing those two trees, which help accomplish the good sites goals and objectives. So I hear you, um, but I would submit that on balance, given everything else and the extent of replanting, that we still, our ask is still to take down the, the 19 trees as shown in the plan. It looks like Brian may want to jump in. Yeah, I, I guess I'm up here. Um, I guess if you guys are telling me this planning board is telling me that this is what I need to agree to to make this happen, then I will agree to it. I respect the authority of this board. I chose to come before this board. I, I will say as a property owner here, um, eight months into this process, my legal bills are in the five figures. Um, that doesn't include $3,000 for an arborist report. I, I'm, I'm just kindly as, you know, a taxpayer and like, you know, a, a good citizen of this town. I'm I would really just like those two trees to come down too so that I could enjoy my property the way I want. If you're telling me, no, we're not going to do that for you, I'll say okay, but I am just kind of asking nicely once if if you wouldn't mind, I'm planting 59 new trees um, and I'm, I'm hoping that that makes the people on this planning board feel okay about making an exception in this case. That's kind of all I have. But if you won't, I'll, I'll leave them. I just would appreciate it if you did. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm supportive of those trees uh, coming down for the applicant's request. Okay. Dick, uh, you haven't missed much actually by not being here <laughs> because we tend to talk in circles here. But in any event, um, any thoughts? We were, there's some uh, thought about a lighter touch. I think something along the lines that you were talking about before is a compromise. And um, um, if you want to ask any questions or, or weigh in on this, it might be uh, helpful. You might be muted, Dick. <coughs> Dick, I think you're muted. I don't think he's on. No. Jennifer, you're shaking your head. There you are. There you are. Dick. What? Dick, what? Can you hear us? Go ahead. Can you hear us, Dick? Yep. I think the chairman is asking Apparently for your opinion, you. Dick. Yeah. Okay. Well, it sounds like. There's a little bit more work to be done to you know, come up with a slight, uh, a lighter touch, as Tom put it so well, and that that uh, uh, you know we don't have to knock down trees 
that are healthy, even if they are in the grading and limit line, unless we're going to do something uh, construction wise that was going to destroy them. You know, so those, there are a few trees that should be saved. Um, and I think that this, uh, this can, you know, with a little bit of uh, good, good uh, observation, we need Dennis to be back out in the field and, and give some suggestions to, to uh, Mr. Giuliani's uh, firm. And, um, you know, and I think we're, we're close to a solution, but we, we're not there yet. So if I can, if I could, sorry. We came to this meeting with the intention of moving this along. Right. Uh, and I think that we ought to move this along tonight mm -hmm. if we can. Um, I, for my, my sake, I don't feel a need to go out and do any more best site investigations. I'll take Homestead's word for it. They are arborists. Um, just because the trees are poor doesn't need they mean they need to come down, I believe. But the applicant makes a very good uh, case that the replacement schedule is very aggressive and I think will be a benefit to the neighborhood. Um, actually, the replacement schedule may end up providing more habitat than, the, than these few trees we're talking about that are going to come down if habitat is a concern. And it always is for birds um, and squirrels. Squirrels are going to go wherever they want. Um, so. I do think, though, that it is it is wrong to take down these two healthy trees. I just feel that it's unnecessary. I understand it's necessary from the applicant's point of view, but I'm not sure it's justified justified from the town's point of view. I would like to move it along with the stipulation that we talked about earlier, which is um, the stipulation that two trees remain, clearing the grading limit line remains, and that there is something in codified that says that um, it'll be uh, the buffer zone will be replanted one day should the property change hands and move this to a resolution if we can tonight. Now somebody has to write that up, but I think it might be possible for uh, it to be written up and we can authorize the chairman to sign it. I don't know whether we can do that. Can you go ahead and sign well, we it? can we can articulate language, and that will be the amendment. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to have the ability to whip up the uh, maybe the uh, legal language that we need uh, that uh, uh, Brad and Jennifer will have to agree to. But we can certainly stipulate that that's what it's going to be. I think worst case scenario, we can get the business deal done, and then we can just come back. You don't have to be here. Just come back for the resolution itself as amended and we'll sign off on it and approve it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's from the Declaration of Restrictive Covenants. I think as long as we understand what sort of hallmarks of that are important to the board, for example, it has to be recorded against both properties. There has to be affirmative notice to the development department specifically by either the purchaser or the seller. And we, you know, we could figure that out um, upon property transfer. And the 15 foot buffer on each property, so a total of 30 feet, has to be restored uh, pursuant to a plan submitted to the town environmental coordinator um, to his or her satisfaction. So I think if if we're in agreement that those are the hallmarks that we want to have within that declaration, then the exact language of what goes into the resolution is, uh, you know, I, I don't know that we need to to craft that as we sit here tonight. Uh, of course, if there's any other hallmarks that you would want included in there, we can discuss those in order to bring this to closure. Yep. And would that just be a condition of the resolution, Jen? Yep, exactly. Just like any other yep. resolution? Yep. yep. Like mm -hmm. And to be done before the issuance of a permit, to be recorded, you know, proof of recording submitted prior to a permit. Right. So we yeah, I think that, that's, I think that should go to Tom, the building inspector, I think. What do you think, Sabrina? Sorry, my uh, my mute button seems to not be working tonight, but I agree with that, Bob. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that's that issue. When we come down to really the issue now, just what what do we want to leave? Uh, LDAT is, is fine with the applicant's application to clear the trees as proposed. I think, Tom, you're still looking at the two to keep the two good ones. Dick, where are you on this? Well, <clears throat> I I don't mind if there's a, you know, there's some words that if it's a hallmark or not or not, but that, um, you know, we, 
we don't agree with taking down you know trees that are healthy unless something is being built there uh, to require they be removed. And secondly, I think that uh, you know there's some um, additional work can be done. I have no problem with it being put into the resolution that it worked that way because it's not like we're going to change you know, 10 trees or something like that. It's going to be a handful, um, you know, to, uh, you know, thin out, you know, in some places and, and uh, see what happens there. And, uh, and like I keep saying, and what Tom says too, you know, there are some healthy trees and why should they be taken down? So I think those are small enough that they can be put into the resolution and it can be left up to staff to, um, you know, get to the point that we're we're looking at. Uh, I'm not. Um, I just want to be clear. I'm not. I'm not suggesting. I'm no longer suggesting that um, the that the trees that are in poor condition that are uh, um, apparently planted too close together that they uh, be thinned out in order to save them. I'm, I'm saying that it's okay to take them out as long as the other two uh, healthy trees remain. Right. So to be clear, we're we're talking about tree number six. Six and eleven, I guess. And eleven, or is it, is it 11? so eleven is within the clearing of radio. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to keep six in the spirit of compromise if that works for you guys. I'm trying to find six again. I'm trying to find six. Mine. Is like on do you, the, do you see uh, my cursor? Yeah. Where is um, it? Can you point it out? I can't. I've lost my drawing. It's, I'm trying, but this may highlight everything. No, let's see. I see 11, of course. Uh, hang on. Six is oh. over here. It's over here somewhere, right? But I don't see it. It's okay. just to the right of the septic area. You, you got it up here. Got it. Got it. Okay. By the way, um, the Frank, the roots on the number six, and do they inf come in, come into? Uh, do they impact the septic area? I mean, Norway's roots are pretty wide and shallow. That that septic line, the actual fields are within uh, uh, ten feet. Uh, I'm sorry, five feet of the actual line. The septic uh, box that the engineer drew is the extent of the septic fill. So the um, there really won't be any impact from number six on the septic system. Fine. Okay. Thank you. Let's take the deal. So it's six and 11. Right. He's saying six days. No, six days, 11 comes down. No, well. So Mr. Curley, out of the two healthy trees, the compromise would be one One stays, one, one gets removed. Well, I see the compromise is the two healthy trees stay and all the other trees can come down. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. Well. We need to vote, I guess. I mean, yeah. what are we voting on, Mr. Chairman? Well, we, we could have a, a motion. Someone could make a motion in terms of what they'd like to see in the resolution. Okay, I'll make a motion and we vote on it. Yeah. Should I go? Sure, make a motion on. that you want to keep uh, 11 and 6. You're making it for me. No, no. I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, well, not very well. <laughs> so I. Uh, well, okay. I move that the re that the resolution stipulate that the rating and clearing. Wants, well, we don't have to say that because we're not. That's Chairman, not something. I'm sorry. Ms. Alza PD would like to speak again. Well, uh, public hearing now. Are you closing public? No, we haven't closed it. No. Okay, just because I just wanted to ask two clarifying questions. Well, come on up. Better do it now because yeah, yeah. we're about to. Come on up. Um, the one I just I just realized there was one question that I didn't have here, to answer. Here. You have to go to the. Microphone. Oh, I know. I've just there was one question, um, Mr. Giuliano, that I didn't have completely answered, and it's in the upper left hand corner, like the northeast corner of the property, um, where there are, I guess it's stipulated or it's mentioned right in the doc on the plan that the shrubs will stay. Do you know what I'm referring to? The understory shrubs in that northeast corner of 63 will stay. There's nothing being removed anywhere except on the trees, the, the rest of the property stays exactly like it is. Okay, so even the, the smaller caliber trees in that corner will stay? Yes. Not just the big, huge trees and not just the shrubs, but the smaller, like, you know, four or five caliber 
trees yes. will stay there, the understory. Okay. That's my main question. And then I just wanted to say, this is an interesting question about whether the town should have an independent arborist. Okay, that, that's, that's enough. enough. <laughs> really, but no, I think that's Let's a little different. On. No, no, but I'm saying that in- Okay, but that's, that's, that's for the town okay. board. Go to the town board yeah. with that. Okay, that's, that's okay. enough. Okay, yeah. okay, that's enough. Yeah. But please be respectful, because I'm just, I, it is, the trees look very healthy. I'm, I'm supportive okay. of you doing yeah. this. I, I'm supportive of that space being cleared. But it is an interesting, so subjective. Um, so can subjective. I make a motion? Thank you. Sure. Thank you, sir. What is your name again? El Dad God, God help. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I, I, I move that we approve the application with the uh, clearing and grading limb line in place, the legal language to satisfy um, the concern that a new owner or water either of the properties with the affirmative language that Jennifer talked about um, that the trees that are proposed to be removed are all removed with the exception of tree number six. Okay, is there a second for that? Now, can I just clarify, are, are you voting on the resolution no. as amended as, as I just want to make sure that we understand what, what vote we're taking right now. Is this a vote on the application? or just a vote on potential changes to the resolution. And then you'll have further discussion about maybe another set of potential changes to the resolution. Change right, the resolution. this is the, the vote on the changes to the Sorry. resolution. My language right. isn't, uh, I, you know, I'm not the chairman. Right. <laughs> so, no, I just want everyone to be clear about what, what is being being voted upon and whether this is your, your vote on the application or not. Right, good. Yeah. So, uh, it sounds like it's not, it's just a, no, vote okay, to determine uh, what potential got, changes. And Jennifer, I might ask for a straw poll, depending. So, no, um, do we have uh, do we have a second? Yeah. So, if we don't have a second, the motion dies. Do we have another motion? Uh, I make the motion that uh, we don't have to make the motion of grading clearing the No, no it stays because that's right, not correct. the subject. Correct. Yeah, that there be um, the language that um, Jennifer suggests we put in there in order to. Um, reestablish the buffer zone for in, in the future, and that the uh, trees number tree number six and eleven stay. Not be taken out. Okay, six and eleven. And Tom, where do you stand on on the uh, the thinning of trees? I think that the other trees, as as requested, could come down. Yeah. Okay. Because, so we, because that's so thinning would be part of it potentially. No. No, they can, take it down. they can take it down because the, 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 the replanting schedule is really quite aggressive and touches really all parts of the property. And I think that that's uh, a benefit to the neighborhood. And by the way, there needs to be a, I think also there needs to be a stipulation that this is being done because of the special condition of the two properties yeah, being over that, the co-ownership co of course that yes that's got to be yeah, so essentially yeah. it's um the tree removal permit uh, request is is um, granted with the exception of tree six and eleven so maybe a clearer way to put okay. it okay uh, i'll second that uh, all those in favor of uh that motion uh, we'll do a straw vote i guess uh, dick nay Eldad. He said nay. He said nay. <laughs> I would remind people that the three people are necessary to carry a uh, motion. Um, I, well, I guess the question is, uh, before I vote, I mean, if we don't have a majority for that amendment, where does that put us? Here, still. <laughs> have another have another session, I guess. Oh, no, we don't want to do no, that. No, we don't. Okay, then, then, uh, um, I. I, okay. I'm you, Tom, you're I. It's your motion. I'm I. So the motion carries in three to one. So that would be the language that would be incorporated, Jennifer, into the uh, uh, amended resolution. Okay. And that resolution can be amended and we can, we can sign that at our next meeting, will that be available? I, I think that's what we should do because I think there are enough changes in here. Again, this is not, we could close the public hearing. 
and then just have the resolution prepared so it'll be out and ready uh, for us to vote on uh, next time, which will be in two weeks. Does that sound um, doable? Reasonably amenable to folks. We could, we, I mean, we could, I guess, do the language now, but I think that there's consideration needs to be given to Jennifer for her piece, which might require a little bit well, more than just. Yeah, all the pieces. And again, this, this really will not hold you up. There's no need for any, any additional work or anything else. It's just, it's done. And uh, it's just the formality of the resolution. So you can go forward and do, do your stuff. Uh, we were actually hoping to do that tonight, but. <laughs> Um, anyway, so um, is there a motion then to close the public hearing on this action? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Dick, were you aye or I didn't hear? Uh, aye. Aye. <laughs> that was a nap for a while. Okay. So the public hearing is closed, and is there a motion then to direct staff to redraw an amended resolution for our next meeting? To amend this proposed resolution, that needs to be able to change to the drawings. To yes, good point. Schedule. Yes, good point. The tree schedule needs to be amended too, right? To be consistent. Well, I'm not sure if the replacement now gets affected because now two more trees are being saved. So we got to look at those calculations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair. Is it possible for you to do that by the December 20th meeting, Brad? Yes. Um, but I'm not sure it, it doesn't change anything on your end if you guys are still going to plant everything you want to plant and you're just deciding to save two trees. I, unless you guys want to plant less, that's the only way it would change anything. Yeah, we got we got to discuss that internally, Dennis, and we'll get back to you. Okay. All right, let's just keep in mind the timing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, please. Uh, so, uh, Felicia, we would really like, like to have this material as soon as possible, right? So we can notice uh, it yes, definitely. Okay. So as soon as you can, be great. Um, so we we have a motion then to do that. Is there a motion to do that? Direct, Direct staff to uh, yeah. yes. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Carries for zip. We somehow got to tonight's finish line. Yeah, I, I just want to make a footnote here, which is this has been torture for me personally. I don't know about everybody else. I suspect it's been the same. Uh, this has been a, an especially difficult one. And I, I really, really appreciate everybody, um, your, your patience um, and your kind consideration for what we're trying to do up here. Um, I'm really thankful that um, you guys have decided to come to us. And um, I hope that um, Everything's going to turn out fine in the end. Um, can I add to that? Sure. Um, I, you know, I I, I agree. Um, uh, I appreciate uh, the input uh, from all uh, parties, um, and I think that it's important that we take these questions seriously. That we don't just uh, rubber stamp applications or just uh, you know we just take we we. We take it all seriously, and um, there's a lot of precedent, uh, you know, in, in these types of applications. And uh, so I think the questions about precedent are important. And I also think that, um, so, you know, a lot of the discussion has to do with this specific property, right. but yes. not just this specific property, right? It applies to everything else that we think about that comes before us, that has come before us in the past, mm -hmm. and it will come before us in the future, um, and the implications uh, thereof, which is why sometimes it takes a long time to get to a place, um, but uh, so I appreciate uh, all the effort on all, all stakeholders. Okay, thank you. Okay, we move now to our next item. This is uh, the public hearing on Stansky. This is 180 Croton Avenue. This is an application for site development plan approval. Hi, I'm Mary Scott, the architect. Stan Stansky's here as well. Oh, is that Mm -hmm. Can I share my screen? Please. Um, Chairman, before we get started, just a motion to open the public hearing. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah. is there a motion, though, to open the public hearing on this application? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay, let me get through the paperwork. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe I have yours. Yeah, you have. That's definitely yours. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Um, this is smaller. Hold on, I gotta move my pictures out of the way. Okay. Um, I'll get this smaller, sorry. Um, I can show. This here. Oh yeah, sorry. So much open here. Okay. So here's our survey. Right. Um, as we spoke about before, the majority of the Stansky house is in Mount Kisco. Um, a little bit originally in Newcastle. And then when the surf lane subdivision was done in 2001, a piece of property became available and it was termed vacant land, not a building lot. Um, two stipulations were the um, site easement on Croton Avenue surf lane to be kept open and the clearing and grading line, which surrounds this area not to be disturbed. So um, over the years, the area has been maintained. Um, there were some ash trees that had um, died along the way and were cleared out, but the Stanskys have taken nice care of their property. In 2001, we started designing an addition, which is here. And because, let me just go down here. 2021, Mary. 2021, sorry. Um, just feels like across the street from Stansky's house, there is a, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got a, two hours of watching the other got me a little uh, discombobbled. Anyway, here's the entrance to the, the sawmill. And so because of that, a road here, no parking on Croton Avenue. Um, when we proposed to build the addition, the contractor advised putting in a road from Croton Avenue that would access the site. And as you can see, one of the issues with the topography is everything is flowing down towards Stansky's property and also to Surf Lane. So what happened was in uh, May, um, the addition was finished. The road had come through, the contractor cleaned up where the road had been, put down topsoil, seed, hay, um, but we had a huge thunderstorm and the water washed down from the, uh, all the streets above. And because this was all disturbed earth, there was dirty water that basically flowed down to um, the neighboring five surf lane. Um, in addition, when there was, uh, the contractor had run some pipes out to the edge of the property and that also directed water toward the neighbor. So, you know, with the, the intention with building the road was never to disturb the earth. I mean, it was kind of a, a logistical decision that was made. I missed the fact that we were in the clearing and grading line at the time. And so it became a problem. Um, immediately to mitigate the problem of um, the disturbed earth, there was more topsoil, seed, hay to stabilize the area. Uh, and then we came up with a um, well, stormwater mitigation plan to take the water from the addition and bring it down along the side of the property to the area down here. So it would gradually spread out to um, a lower area where there's, there's no uh, houses or anything planted. And then it, it actually borders on sawmill property. 
Right, and I think that uh, our town engineer has indicated that uh, he is satisfied with that uh, remedial stormwater uh, solution. Right, so and he had a couple of it. points about it, and right. we're, we're going to take care of those. Right, and we can condition those. He's comfortable with that. So I think we're in pretty good shape on the stormwater, aren't we, Bob? Maybe, I, you know, I don't want to take your thunder away. but I No, Mr. Chairman, you are absolutely correct. I think it's a commendable uh, stormwater plan to mitigate the issues at hand. I just have extra notes. Uh, yeah. I can go over if you like when you get to me. So, yes. But to answer your question, yes, the stormwater plan is acceptable. Right. So maybe we should um, focus on the planting plant because I think that was what we were okay. talking about last time. Exactly. So so just through the help of Bob and Dennis, um, we actually did um, quantify the area of disturbance and the area within the planting and grading that or the clearing and grading line that was disturbed. So these are the stakes kind of showing that. Um, this colored area shows, and you can see how the water just rushed down here, and that was part of the issue. Um, the other thing is what we're trying to introduce in the planting plan. This is kind of the scrub that is existed between this property and Surf Lane. And so we want to introduce some of that back into this area as a buffer to help mitigate the water coming down and to kind of naturalize the area. Um, you can see if you go back, I mean, there always was a fair amount of turf here on the corner, on the, uh, you know, the actual Stansky's front yard, but there was some brush coming in here as well as a few trees. And as I said, a number of the ash trees have died over the years. So this is 2007. You can see not much change in 2013 and 2021. So this is a drawing showing the actual uh, land underneath and the clearing and grading area. Um, this is a picture of the thicket that is off to the side on the surf lane. So here's the planting plan um, and Dennis made recommendations. Um, Stand work, worked with Missy Fabel to come up with a plan that would um, actually improve what had been there. So there's a combination of four trees, two red maples, two sugar maples, um, viburnum, mixed shrubs, honeysuckle, a lot of underplanting with um, creek sedge. And then in addition, putting in a row of spice bush on this side, also with the creek sedge plugs in order to not only help the water that comes down from the road up above, but anything else that's generated as it goes over toward the surf lane property. And this is a drawing of those that planting kind of on the site plan. So you can see how, I mean, it really far exceeds what was there before and will form a nice buffer. And just to add to that, Mary, from, from our previous meeting, um, there, there's been a considerable increase in the amount of um, plantings that we added. You know, basically we went, we went from two trees to four and then all of the, um, the underplanting, we you know we we took into account and, and really um, considerably filled the area. Just just to note the minor, but in the underplanting, there was a um, in addition to the creek sedge, there's a golden ground cell. It's it's on the key of this slide, but the previous slide it must have <laughs> fell off. But um, it it doesn't change the density. It's basically they'll be it'll be placed in wet areas and dry areas based on the landscape <laughs> design. Um, but yeah, so those are the notable changes that we did from from the last again a considerable increase in the in the volume of planting that we did. Right, I think uh, Dennis, you were out with them and worked with them on this, and uh, you were satisfied with uh, what what what, what uh, you're seeing and uh, using native plants, etc. Yes, and uh, I think there was a spice bush or two growing where they're proposing to put 
uh, the row six by the surf lane, so I thought that was a good idea. I, I never have a problem cheating, you know, if the site tells me what it wants, you, it's good to go with that. <laughs> never thought you would consider nature to be cheating, but okay. My position. So, uh, yeah, again, it looks, it looks pretty good to us uh, at this point. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I just have um, two quick questions. Am I wrong? I, I must be wrong. Uh, I thought that honeysuckle was considered um, an invasive. Is that is that correct, or am I wrong about that? Yes and no. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, the, the, the it's, one of, right. it's one of those nights. Right. Yeah. It's, <laughs> so so this this particular uh, species, which which I did look up because I get the same reaction when I hear that as the common name. Uh, this is actually a different genus, so this is this is native. But but to your point, yeah, a number of them uh, are invasive. Uh, none of them are wetland plants, so they they sometimes serve as a good upland indicator for me when I see them. But I agree, they're not native. Um, and then the other uh, the balance of the property, which is not um, part of the landscape plan. Um, can you remind me, some of this is going to be, uh, some mistaken, is going to be lawn, and the rest of it was going to be mowed meadow. Is that, did I, have, is my memory right about that, especially in the upper right-hand corner in this slide, that was going to be uh, mowed meadow up in there? Well, this is, this is the um, site easement. Right. We're upper right-hand side. Um, you know, we're filling in and, you know, some of it's going to bleed out, but the rest is we're replacing turf, which was turf before. Uh, please uh, define turf for me. Grass. You mean, uh, okay. I mean, if you look at... You mean lawn? Lawn, yes. <laughs> I mean, if you look at what was there before, you know, this, I mean, it's pretty beat up and... At yeah. this point, right. Right. but I mean, it was always lawn. It was and, always, and it was always your intention that it remain as lawn. Correct. Okay. I, mean, I think it was necessary to comply with the site uh, easement, right? Well, the, right on the Newcastle side, side yes. yes. Uh, it, yeah. it, it needed to be lawn, though. No, it, just lawn. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't. No, it could be a boat meadow, right? As oh, long as it just sorry, doesn't yeah, get a certain height. Right, right. It's just going to continue to be. I, the term that I use is maintained as a turf cover, meaning just based on the clippings and the you know height of those clippings. But whatever wants to grow there, right? You're not going to make it just a monoculture of a single species of grass. Exactly. You're just going to keep mowing. For okay, so species. that's not one. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good. Um, Sabrina, any questions, uh, comments? No, I, I'm all set with this one. This is really just a Dennis and Bob application. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Bob, you had some comments? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, basically one through four, just some technical areas that I had commented on. I'll go through them real quick. <clears throat> just some more uh, clarifications on the level spreader. Um, that's number one and two. And three, refer to the level spreader detail. Um, on the plan, you had two areas of disturbance areas. I indicated on it that the one shown on the left-hand side should be removed. I the know. one on the right-hand side is correct. So it just created a little bit of confusion. Just mm -hmm. a typo. Uh, most importantly, the asphalt is critical in this particular case because I just want to make certain it's put in accord in the plan. It is critical to convey all that water away from the septic. And most importantly, <coughs> I want to make certain when they put in the piping, you have you maintain the minimum separation distances from the absorption fields to the drainage pipe, which I believe is 25 feet as per county regulation. So that's the reason uh, it'd be critical to submit the as built uh, when that would be. Will you be doing that, Mary? Who will be doing the as built for you? Um, well, we'll be coordinating with the surveyor and, and getting the as built done. Very good, and also to make certain when this is being installed that sometimes it slips through the cracks, uh, make certain your contractor contacts Terry Rowe for general conformance inspections of the stormwater inspections as well. Yes. Well. And those are, and a new revision date on there too, because if there's not a revision date, you know, it's 
makes a little bit of confusion. That's item number six, and uh, ends my comments, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Bob. Hey, Dennis, did you have any additional comments, or are we set? Uh, no, I think we incorporated into the resolution. I'm good. Okay, very good. Okay. <clears throat> any other comments, board members? Do we have any comments from the public? Anyone's uh, hand raised? I'm sorry. No hands. Okay, very good. Is there a motion then to close the public hearing? Well, I got a, I got a comment or two. Sure, Nick. Sure. Um, what in the the document called short environmental assessment form? There's a couple of questions that weren't answered. Uh, like number two didn't have an answer. Um, number thirteen didn't have an answer. Um, and I'm not sure I understand uh, the count that they, I think there will be some stormwater discharges that flow to adjacent properties. Is that true? Or is this, this system going to totally stop the flow to the next uh, property? Reduce it. All the things that I hear so far are good reductions, really good. Well, they answered no, that stormwater discharges won't flow to an adjacent property. So that's number 17. Otherwise, I think it's a great, a great plan. Um, just to answer your question, we're doing everything in our power for the stormwater that this house in addition is causing to keep it on our property. The water that's coming down from High Ridge and Croton um, Avenue, we can't control that. I mean, we're doing our best. Of course. But um, but that's so, what I think should be explained in here. Okay. I, I have no problem going back and... I mean, and the uh, number two, I thought you had to get approval from um, the state on something, uh, but you didn't answer that, that question. Not that we're aware of, no. No, really? From the it, state? What about in the setback? Oh, well, that wasn't the state. I mean, we had to get a, uh, a zoning variance from Newcastle. Okay, so you got an approval. We did. A variance is an approval. Okay, I'm sorry, you're saying state, and I don't have the form in front of me, so. Okay, these are small things, but I, it's one thing that I find almost every time. So you're not alone. Okay. Uh -huh. But, you know, you got a lot of questions to answer. And, and I agree with, you know, all but the, the few that I've suggested. And, um, you know, I think there will be some water that, that uh, you know, carries forth. But your reduction program, I don't see how you can make it any better. So <laughs> I'm for the project. Okay. Thank you. Good. Do we then have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a draft uh, resolution before us. Uh, I trust the applicants had a chance to look at it as well. Um, I have Stan, I believe, yes. Yep. I think there's one here. I, I marked it on one copy, but I seem to have lost my copy. Uh, it's just that um, uh, somewhere in here, I think it was referred to as the town of Mount Kisco. I think it's really just the village. So wherever that might have been, it's, it's just a minor correction. Um, but other than actually, that, town that, slash village. Is it a town? Well, whatever it is, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, with or without that uh, suggested change, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? Well, I got a minor typo, but okay. Where is it? It's on. Uh, this is we're doing the uh, resolution, right? right? Correct. Okay, so it's page one, uh, line forty. The applicants are proposing to implement of plantings. I think yeah. of should go away. Okay. And then uh, I've given a couple other comments to uh, Felicia and uh, you know, and that's, but they're, they're in the, 
the minutes. So okay, that's different than yeah. Okay, so yeah, we'll take out that that word of. And um, otherwise, are we set? And so, is there a motion to adopt the resolution with that amendment? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, to the applicant, we discussed this informally. Uh, I know you mentioned that you were getting some pushback or no cooperation from the village of Mount Kisco with regard to a curb. If it is helpful to you, uh, we haven't quite figured out what the uh, protocol might be that uh, this board or the town or the uh, uh, building engineering staff uh, might uh, coordinate with the village and see if they can't help you to get that curb up there, which would, I think, help uh, the situation for everyone. That would be great. So if you'd like to do that, uh, I think Bob Seely has uh, volunteered to talk to our DPW folks, and maybe they'll talk to their DPW folks and see if they can find some asphalt around someday. To <laughs> Before the plants close. Yes, yeah. Mary, Mary, excuse me, uh, Chairman. Mary, it'd be helpful when we have that meeting, you're there to explain the situation. Because I'm still not quite certain whether it's in our town or uh, Mount Kisco, but you'll be the best to let us know where it is. So when okay. we do make the meeting with Bart and someone with Mount Kisco, uh, it'd be great if you can attend. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, actually, quite a bit of it is, is uh, new actually, the majority is is Newcastle. Hmm. That, the entire surf lane area. I mean, yeah, that's what I figured because I was looking at where the driveway access was. Right. Now that I'm looking at the plan in front of me, uh, yeah, it looks to me it's all in uh, Newcastle. So I can coordinate with Bart. Uh, we can meet out there with Mary and uh, see what his opinion is of it. I can't guarantee anything, but I can coordinate the meeting. Okay, sounds that would good. Be wonderful. If you could push the cost over the village in Alcisco, we appreciate it. <laughs> I'll, I'll try my best on that. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. So you're all, all right, set. thank you. Uh, we have minutes. We have the minutes of November 1, uh, 2022. Uh, I made a couple of minor changes I've given to uh, Felicia. Uh, does anyone else have anything that's uh, sub substantive? No. Dick is giving me. Dick's giving me a couple of changes as well. Okay. I got some, there's some minor typos that Felicia yep. will take care of. Very good. Tell them you're okay? Yes. Okay. Is there a motion then to adopt the minutes of November 1 as amended? Sure. With the, with the minor changes, right? Right. Exactly. Second? So, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we have the minutes of November 15. Again, I think the same thing. Probably some wordsmithing yeah. nonsense. Of, uh, so I, I was absent, so I'm not going to vote on these um, on the on the 15th. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That makes sense. Yes. Unless you watched it on television. Uh, I mean, I did closely. So I don't. Remember. Do we have a legal quorum to vote? Yeah. Does that affect their ability to vote? I'm happy to vote on it. If I mean, it's just the minutes. Yeah. I mean, if you weren't here, I, I would recommend not voting on them. But um, do we have three people that were at the November 15th meeting also here tonight? Yeah, I was. Don't we have? I, don't I was there. Dick, yeah, Dick was there. Dick so. was here. Yeah, yeah. So three people. Dick, yeah, Chairman, and, and, and Tom. There's one counts, and so yeah, 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 so yeah. there is a quorum. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. I even wasn't remote. No. Right. Sorry. Is there a motion? To move. approve those? To move. Don't move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Alicia has put together the 2023 Action Pact Planning Board Tour for 2023. There's one change. Uh, November 7 is a Tuesday, the election day, so that will actually be Wednesday, November 8th. Well, otherwise, uh, uh, we, we think we coordinate around holidays pretty well and I think we're in pretty good shape. Have we booked all the arenas and all the All stuff? of them, yes, exactly. And opening acts and everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So our next item is a discussion item. Uh, this is the opportunity for public property in the Chapel Hamlet, continued discussions. Uh, I'll give you an update. Did you guys need to pass resolution adopting that? I guess we probably should, right? Yeah, yeah. that's why you have it. Yeah, there should be a motion. <laughs> okay, is there a motion to adopt the, um, uh, the tour? So moved. Second. I got All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
So the update, I uh, just want to uh, briefly, I, I did have a conversation with the supervisor and uh, uh, Sabrina uh, jump in when, you know, we talk about the RFP, but apparently the RFP is out uh, for the survey. Uh, I think they're waiting for answers, responses on the uh, RFP, and they're due in a couple of weeks, December 15th, 16th, something like that. The 15th. 15th. So the next steps, um, as articulated by the supervisor, and where where we fit in on this, is that the, you know, the town board, perhaps with or without our help, will obviously uh, look at the RFP results and then uh, pick the consultant. So I'm unsure whether we'll be involved in that, or whether people want to be involved, or they whether they want us to be involved, which is fine. But after that, um, I, I think the plan is that they want to work jointly with us uh, regarding the public engagement. Um, uh, to help craft the questions uh, for the survey with the consultant. Mm -hmm. So giving guidance, first of all, to the consultant, which I think makes real important sense so we don't go off the tracks. And probably this will be done over two meetings. Um, I, I think the, the deal probably will be somewhere in early to mid-January, a preliminary meeting, a joint meeting between the planning board and the town board before we have a meeting with the consultant so we can lay out the issues and lay out the thoughts and getting everyone together uh, with a consensus and then meeting with the consultant. Um, and then um, uh, once the, the, you know, the survey results are back, uh, then at, at some point uh, the town board will probably turn over to someone like ULI, not necessarily ULI, someone like that to start to firm up the plans and tell us uh, about the constraints and, and, and how this all might work. So um, uh, that's where we are. So nothing between now and the holidays. Uh, the town board only has one more meeting left, so do we. Uh, I don't think there was any appetite to do anything until they've had a chance to look at the responses from the RFP. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems to make good sense to us, and, and I, I was very appreciative that there was a willingness to uh, reach out and, 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 you know, all the work that we've done on our so-called North Star, I think that's going to be the kind of information that's going to be very helpful for that first meeting uh, as we uh, meet with the town board on this. So that's where we are. If people want to add anything else, uh, by all means, uh, or questions, I mean, uh, that's, that was it. Just a question. Um, so the, sorry, to clarify, you said the RFP went out. It's going um, and then uh, who uh, wrote the RFP and, and what did it ask? Sabrina wrote it, right? Sabrina wrote it? I wrote it and the town board commented on it and so, legal reviewed it. Just in, in, it. in sort of in big picture, what, what did it ask for? It's asking for a consultant team to assist the town with putting together a, a community-wide survey regarding the use of public property in the Chappaqua Hamlet. Got it. And and there's a deadline for responses? The December 15th. Got it. Okay. All right. Exciting. Yeah. So it's it's it is moving forward. Um there was um in our packet. Is this, yeah. is this mine? Is that yours? No, I think that's mine. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Anyway, there was in our packets, uh it's not on the agenda this evening, but I you know take a look, careful look at it. Yeah. Um this is on the North Greeley. Uh, an amendment to the proposal for an amended uh, special use permit uh, change in the law uh, designed for North Greeley. And um, um, look at it carefully. Uh, our comments are due back by, the Jan by January 15th. It will be on our agenda for the next meeting, December 20th. From my perspective, uh, it seems very rough to me and, and, and requires a good deal of uh, tightening in terms of language, et cetera. One thing that we, I think, as a substantive issue is I think we need to be mindful of uh, parking constraints. You know, we talked about a parking study at one point. Now we're seeing why that might be necessary and why it could be important. So as you go through it, um, we should, I think that would be helpful for us to, to lend support and comment to the town board um, uh, on, on that issue. But take a look at it. Uh, we'll, we'll, you know, uh, we'll have probably a couple swings at it. As we'll see it on December 20th, we'll probably see it for our first meeting in January as well before we uh, are due to have it back to the town board by uh, December, uh, excuse me, January 15th. So um, it is, it is what it is. Uh, so I, it's only a draft at this point, as I understand it. And um, I think there's probably going to be a good deal of work on it. Um, but uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, it, it, I just just glanced at it, um, knowing that it wasn't our, on our agenda tonight. But it 
there's some really big issues in here about uh, zoning in particular and, mm -hmm. and you know how it should be used and all those things right um, so it's not just design stuff you know it's oh no it's yeah. planning stuff there are bigger issues that perhaps we are being asked to think about also but I think we should think about all of it yes I agree I think we really this is the you really have to project when you when you take it uh, it that I'd yes. like a copy of what it is now too, because I'm I'm not able to get into the uh, the you know the uh, whole system that that the town has to get to the right place. So I have to go and talk to the internal expert on computers. Okay, <laughs> it means he can't get his email. I don't think it means he can't get his town email. Town email, right? Well, this was in the packet itself. Are you getting your packets, Dick? Can you go down to get the packet or no? I'm happy to drop it off if you, if you can't get that. Hmm. Well, I, the packet that came. Uh, it was the proposed uh, local law NG zero special permit. It's a it's a from uh, Felicia, right up in the upper left hand corner. Let's see. Maybe I have it. You should have it. It was part of the packet. Um, also, to let you know, the applicant has asked to come in and um, provide you with a concept discussion to frame the legislation. Okay. So, my mistake. You I still a, can't access it on the uh, thing, but in my hand, it is. So that's good. Thank you. <laughs> but I didn't want to say. Sorry, that. Sabrina. You said that, that the applicant wants to come for the discussion. The applicant the will be present. The applicant will be present on twelve twenty to provide a concept. Uh, overview of the project that they are looking at, which is the basis for the NG zero legislation. I mean, they're on our agenda for that. Is that correct? Correct. Concept. Okay. But they, are they asking anything of us, or just no? This? No, they know that you are re reviewing the legislation as per the referral from the town board. They thought giving you contacts for that referral would be helpful. That's great, but there, there's no actual application for that before us. No. Got it. No. All righty, uh, so that's about it. Uh, is there a motion then to close the meeting? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye.